Hey, this is Zepp, and on behalf of the guys, Strew, Boomer, and Lukey, we want to thank you for downloading and listening to our podcast of The Ticket Outdoors, brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. And remember, when nothing's going right, just go fishing. Summer fun begins at Mills Fleet Farm. For thrills on the water, jump on a full-throttle Enforcer towable on sale, $99.99. Save on Michelin tires. Buy four, get a $70 MasterCard reward card. Bring home the good stuff for your pets. Get a $10 gift card when you buy select sizes of science diet dog or cat food. And stock up on Pine Tree Farms suet cakes. They're just 69 cents each at Mills Fleet Farm. It's time for Ticket Outdoors on Sports Radio 105, The Ticket. Boys and girls. Everybody's here, present and accounted for. Welcome to Ticket Outdoors. I'm Zep. There's the wild card. I'm back in town. Steve Struzinski. <laughs> Thank Boomer you, sir. is in town. Our producer, Mark Lukey, even came in and took a front row seat tonight. But the man of the hour. The guest of honor. Uh, our guest of honor tonight, Papa Boomer Vaughn, brought in that big old bird. We heard the audio. I might even have to, I might have to round that up again. That bird deserves listening. That story. Oh, it's yeah. just a pig. Boomer, yeah. It's just a pig. Oh, I'm trying. Okay, to, I gotta go. Boomer, I gotta go. Yeah. I gotta go. <laughs> you <laughs> should see this thing. It's the biggest thing since Jesus. It's huge. I'm Boomer. gonna look for it here. <laughs> anyway, what Zepp was trying to say was Papa Vaughn brought in that turkey with smoked turkey, white and dark, and cheese, pineapples, a couple of cocktails, crackers. Uh, thank you very much, Dad, because it tastes great, and I'm proud of you, and uh, it's, it's a lot of, of fun, man. It's kind of a nice meal. Yeah, yeah. I'll never be able to find it. Now, I, I who needs, who needs Diana? She can stay in Shatek. I got old man I Vaughn right here. I thought beautiful Diana was going to come in studio. What well, if she's listening on the old man, the old man showered up and was all ready to go, <laughs> mm-hmm. trying to impress she, Diana with yeah, the he cooking. He put on some Old Spice or something. <laughs> He, yeah. did. Kind of he did. Layered it on. Baby powder. Here Welcome we are. Back. Welcome, Welcome back, back from the 4th of July weekend. I'll tell you what, I didn't make the 4th of July fireworks. I'm about a 10 o'clock at night kind of guy, and I, <laughs> and I heard them. Last year you watched them in the buff, I heard. Uh, I did, after the hot tub deal. But the uh, no, this, this time... Uh, I was I was in bed by 10:30. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what; these people. Like, Nobody in, loves me. I, in Chatek, Wisconsin, the Fourth of July is a big, big deal, and I'm one of those guys who sneaks out at five o'clock in the morning and puts the lawn chairs on the curb, hope no one sees me <laughs> for the parade. You sure, know? that guy. And then uh-huh. You, you got to like, stay with them if you put them out there. That's how you steal candy from the kids too, uh, Stu, no, don't I, you? I'm cheap ass. I, I, a lot of candy. All right. And then you sit on the curb for an hour and a half and watch <laughs> trucks go by, and you think you're in a parade. You think, well, that was nothing special, but you come back and do it again next year yeah. Um, yeah. it's um uh, it's, it's called tradition. It's called tradition. But it was a gorgeous weekend, and yeah. uh, it was a lot of fun. But, again, I uh, I miss the fireworks, and I'm taking for granted that they were really, really sharp. Yeah. 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 So how about you, Boom? Did you... Yeah. You, you know, I went up to uh, Gull Lake and did a little fishing with uh, Sophie and some friends. and then got a... <laughs> <laughs> How'd your friends do? That's, they did good. Nicole uh, uh, caught a bigger fish than I did, so yeah, I'll probably did. never, never let that down. Almost a six. What? I said get used to that, I buddy. I appreciate that. I was all about the boat control. And... Uh, uh, then we, Nothing uh, better than Gull Lake and a piece of bass, I'll tell you <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> Crappies, walleyes, whatever. It's whatever, all good. It's all good. But Absolutely. On a good. serious note, we did get to go to Otter Tail, which was kind of special to me because my grandma grew up on Long Lake there. So I spent a lot of summers learning to fish, and we went and fished the bridges and the channels. And I had a new little fishing buddy, Cole and Sophia, and we went out tubing, and it was it was pretty good. Caught a lot of sun and had to make it in studio night, so life was good. And we did catch the fireworks in Brainerd. How old is Cole? Eight. Boy, oh, that's perfect. He's, yeah. I've met... I've, I've met him where I'm with with Nicole at some place. I'm not yep. even sure where. Yeah, seemed like a nice young man, nice yeah. kid. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you know, and soap's full of the the devil too. So, yeah. So they had a blast. They just didn't, and you know, they had the old T Pro, the Alumacraft, and I had it flooring on them on the uh, tube. Nicole didn't see that how fast we actually were <laughs> going. So that was that was kind of nice. But and that's how they became the Brady Bunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the song, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah, but I did yeah. win on air. We did have some athletic competition. I did smoker and, and all of those. It's pretty good. <laughs> all right, Zep. Not going to get in. Yeah, I did, let's uh, talk about your weekend. Oh, man, and I went out and did a little fishing, and we're over in South Dakota. It's their traditional family firearms and fireworks. 
and all were a big hit, uh, a lot of fun. Uh, and then reserve Sunday for fishing. But you didn't uh, you didn't blow off your <coughs> finger like one of those football players. You're about that. There's mm-hmm. two pro football. I think two pro football yep. players who literally were doing firework stuff. One's yeah. a, either a cornerback or a quarterback. I didn't hear the whole story. Mm-hmm. Blew off two of his fingers this last weekend. Well, let's that. hope it's a cornerback. A quarterback <laughs> might need He doesn't those. need Yeah, he doesn't need uh, to. Go ahead. Yeah, all right. No, I no, apologize. No. Well, there's that kid in Maine yeah, that uh, killed died. himself. Yep. He put a mortar up on his head and oh, was pretending fun. to light it and ended up killing himself. But oh, uh, no, we had no injuries were, were reported. And we set off a pretty impressive fireworks display. And with all the kids running around in the dark, tripping and falling, <laughs> we might have had a couple of beers, us adults. I'm surprised. Uh, we come out of that injury free every year, knock on wood. But that was a big hit, and then we got out and uh, did a little fishing over that way on uh, for or at uh, Lake Thompson, and um, got into some uh, some sm- uh, some crappies, which isn't really what we wanted to fish out there. Wanted to find some perch, more likely some largemouth right. is what I was looking for, and we just didn't get into them. And then a storm started rolling in, so it was time to hightail it, and the pre- barometric pressure was dropping. I think <laughs> I, I listened to a lake report once, and I'm, I think that that's what screwed up. Yeah, the cold front came through. The cold front. That's We're on the wrong line. end of the lake, but yeah, my dad, now that I've been doing this show and hanging out with Boomer and all the big shots that we have on the on the show, and they're frequently listening on 105 The Ticket. Uh, hello out there to Great Plains Hunting. Mom and Dad, if you're listening right now. And uh, so when I come back, I've got all the answers. He's like, all right, big shot. Well, I'm like, well, let's see. The wind's coming blow south. Let's get on the north side. And, that a boy. Well, nothing, though. I mean, you just look like a bigger boob when you don't catch anything. But, but you did catch some crappies, right? We did get into some crappies, but uh, just Dad wasn't. He's like, no, we'll have to clean those. Uh, and, so. and you told your dad when, when things weren't going as well as you should have been going, you told your dad those famous three words, right? Change your presentation. <laughs> That's it. You no, no, you no. Change no. Look, for cabbage. Look for cabbage. Look for cabbage. Look for cabbage. Hey, something Glow interesting, jigs. something really interesting happened to me on the way back from Shitek. A couple of things. Yeah. A, 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 a couple of things. On the way back from Shitek, <clears throat> on Highway 8, I'm cruising uh, between Turtle Lake and Almina, whatever it is, yeah. and I see a cop coming. I'm heading west, and he's heading east. And I look down, and I'm going 64, and I realize it's about a 55. It's a son of a bucket. This cop, I see him turn around real quickly. I see the lights come on. Mm. I know it's coming after me. Right? Sure. Everyone, everybody in front of me pulls so over. So you floor well. it. Oh, wait, no, yeah, yeah. In my little escort, whatever <laughs> yeah. it is, yeah. Off into the cornfield. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I pull over the side of the road, and, and this cop has got his lights flashing. He pulls up right behind me. Yeah. Parks gets out. He's walks real slow, he walks up to my car, walks right past my car, goes to the guy in front of me, talks to the guy in front of me, comes back to my car and says to me, you were going fast, he was going faster, and he walked, <laughs> and he walked away. <laughs> oh, just, have a, I'm going to go buy a lottery ticket. That's a true story. Yeah. Dino's in the car, we go, holy bucket. Yeah, speaking yeah. of a lottery ticket, I kind of got a little bummed. When we were up on Gull Lake, I was bringing out the T-Pro, and I noticed the sensor on the Ram had it down to like 29 PSI and, you know, the four tires, oh, it should be 40. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I p- pulled it into Discount Tire there in Baxter, Minnesota, and we have a fishing fanatic there, the manager named Jason, fan, hopefully, Ticket Outdoors, yeah. and he was able to get me in and get the ram fixed and i didn't get on the lake but you want to talk about a lottery ticket being up north with a flat tire and a big boat on the back and yeah. finding a guy that had two tires to yeah. match it thank you buddy so yeah. thank you jason at discount tire and thank you for the fishing tips nothing brother. wrong with a little good luck now, he brought this up talking about lottery ticket kind of how being lucky right place right time jim hoig you know you guys know who jim hoig is the mm-hmm. zero risk guy yes. yeah of course i'll be seeing jim friday as a matter of fact he's coming to check for a little while and he and i jim is you think I'm not very adept at doing crap? Jim is worse than I am. I'm telling you, he wants to he wants to duct tape a trailer to a trailer hitch. One of those guys. Yeah. We got five or six kids, four or five or six yes. kids in a big big van, big van, a trailer, a homemade trailer with a neck that weighed about I don't know what it was made out, but weighed about God was heavy on the back of Jim's van. And we're driving on the freeway all the way from the Twin Cities to Cloquet. We pull into Cloquet. And as we're pulling up to a stop sign in Cloquet, the neck of the trailer snapped. And we were about going about a mile and a half at the most, and it snapped and fell to the ground. Uh, yeah. Can you picture? There's two canoes on this trailer. All <laughs> kinds. Of, can you picture what would happen if this thing happened on the freeway? So we're right in front of like a canoe splinters. <laughs> oh man, like a hardware store or something like that. Yeah. And we go in and say, "Here's the problem." We're parked across the street. The guy said, "Tell you, here's a make this phone call." We call this guy about three blocks away. 
there's a guy who had the equipment to do what is called heliarc. Is that what it's called? Yeah, the uh, welding. Yeah, heliarc. Yeah, and, and, uh, and, and, that, that it's like, like it's quite, sounds right, like but, a movie. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah, it's arc welding. It's like yeah, it's like for because it's it wasn't a steel like a trailer. It must have been aluminum. I don't know what kind of was made out of. So this guy is only about a block and a half where we call it. Yeah, I'll stop by. He pulls up. Within an hour, he gets this thing welded back together, charges us 50 bucks around the way. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Get, it's small town stuff, man. High five. we got to get out of Minneapolis. <laughs> hey, well, what about producer Mark? You, Mark, you're in studio. You went to Wisconsin, right, and saw the old man? Yeah, I went to Mount Morris. Yeah, thank, uh, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Small town, uh, central Wisconsin with the family. Did a lot of fireworks. It was a great Wisconsin weekend. Beer, cheese, fireworks, guns. Brought God all my guns America. down. Farting. There America. Be some farting in America. There. America. America. Caught a bunch of crappies. Uh, other than that, yeah, just family time. It was fun. You know, we we were we were pretty blessed. We had some pretty nice weather. It was supposed to get pretty crappy on like Monday or Tuesday, and it was pretty shiny. I mean, we we had some sun. I don't know what you have out there in South Dakota. <clears throat> we up? did. We ended up uh, some uh, storms ended up rolling in Sunday late afternoon. I think we ended up getting them. Uh, did we get them Sunday mm-hmm. night? I think overnight yeah. here. It was yep. nasty. Man. Yeah, it's uh, well, we were just in front of that coming out of South Dakota. They cut that in the afternoon. That west moving east storm pattern as it normally does. Um, otherwise, the weekend was really nice out there. I mean, it's it's South Dakota in July. It's hot and it's humid, and you're just walking around. The sweat is dripping off the end of your nose. But it was dry, and uh, you know, so we got to get outside and get our yayas out. You talk about that trailer hitch thing. I got uh, one of the four wheelers stuck. It was just one of the two wheel drive jobbies. We're down in the bottom, looking at the land. And uh, it got stuck in a creek down there, and Dad's like, oh, dang, I don't have anything to pull it out with. Had a little bungee cord on there. So we took that bungee cord, and we just wrapped it around, you know, the front end yeah, and the back end, just wrapped yeah. it around about eight times real my, tight, that's bumper to bumper, and yeah. you get her out. What that did, uh, Dad did then bring up the old story how we did that once with a roll of tape yeah. out on the road, <laughs> bumper to bumper with a couple of cars. You got to do what you got to do, right? Exactly. You yeah. know, now, Zepp, your dad, for our listeners out there, you know, Zepp has uh, an awesome dad who's invited the entire Ticket Outdoors crew out there. <laughs> three weekends. Three weekend. To clean for a weekend, clean and, cabins. Yeah. And it just <laughs> shut off the computer. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. great planes out in Huron. Yeah. Now, I do some fishing. Uh, in Aberdeen, like Bitter, yeah. Wabe, that, how far is here on South Dakota? 70 from? miles straight north of Great Plains hunting, right up Highway 281. Yeah. Well, I learned a lot about that area last year when we were filming for Gary Howie and we were at Hidden Hills Lodge. Lauren and those guys, if they're listening, great people. And you know, they got a lot of wonderful no-name sloughs out there that hold just monstrous walleyes. Yeah. You know, these 28 inch 10 pound walleyes that are, that are blocked from public access because the farmers have gotten smart and out outsmart the deputies by putting road close signs on, you know? Yeah. But do you have like those type of sloughs out in here on South Dakota that you can fish? You know, we do. We have a couple act- actually out on our farm. Dad put in a bass pond a couple of years ago, which really should be bearing some fruit about now. However, it's been so wet out in South Dakota that it's completely flooded out the bottom. So that little bass pond has now turned into a huge river. In fact, one of the fun things that we did were we went out and blew up the beaver dams. Then the beavers get in and they right. start damming it up. And now you've got yourself a big, huge lake. You're going to call this little, up. You're going to call it Little Devil's Lake, right? right. We could do a Little Devil's it Lake. Keeps it keeps growing and growing. growing. And yeah. uh, so we take uh, Tannerite. You guys are all familiar with Tannerite. Tried Correct. that this weekend. It was goes, awesome. Yeah, it goes boom. <laughs> you shoot it and it goes. It's an explosive. You shoot and it goes boom. And we take it out and we put them in the beaver dams and the kids all we all get out there with the 22 rifles and we shoot the Tannerite and blow up the beaver dams uh, to open that water up so we can start draining it out. But um, uh, but a lot of those, that's a lot of the problem they're having out in South Dakota right now is those little fishing holes right. have just turned into big washed out areas. You talk about Devil La- Devil's Lake yep. growing exponentially so much over yep. in just the last 10 to 20 years. Yep. You, you see a lot of that happening. In, other, in fact, Dad was talking about an entire, I think that's about an 80-acre bottom that we have down there. It was just a cow pasture, and now it's all slew. It's all completely slew, and if you didn't blow up those beaver dams, it would be completely watered out, and the duck hunting has become amazing. He's already talking to Game Fishing Parks, our DNR, out there about getting that set aside for wetlands. Well, you know, I, you know, when I was fishing Wa Bay, I, you know, I swear to God, you know, you have your graphs and GPS and your electronics and, and all the tips on people that help you, but I was out there with Corey Studer, who's been, you know, a really good mentor to me, and we were out there chasing walleyes, and Zepp, we were actually looking through at the ridge lines of the flooded prairie lands uh-huh. to find structure. 
because, you know, it's just like Devil's Lake out there near Aberdeen. A lot of those lakes, uh, Enemy, Bitter, Wabe, they're all just flooded prairie land. So you can get a feel for the uh, feel for the water structure underneath you by just looking to your right when you're looking at the land. That's really know? what it was. 70s and 80s were drought years, and those were my years growing up in South Dakota. They were really dry, arid years. And the 90s and 2000s have been much wetter, even much more so in the last five years. So you see ponds, old dried up creek beds turning into big creeks and small lakes out there. It's interesting to see a change because the farmers don't know what to do with the ducks. They're like, well, I guess we can hunt ducks. No, we don't want ducks. We want pheasants. And they want that to be dry land because wetland, you know, kills pheasant habitat. Uh, but it creates duck. Well, they don't want ducks. They want pheasants. So I want a- you to explain to me again Tannerite. Uh, tannerite, it's, you know, I really don't even know what it is uh, specifically. And, okay, what uh, does it look like? Is it a physical? Oh, it's little pellets. Okay. It just comes in a little jar, in, in various jars, and it's just little pellets, and I suppose it's some sort of gunpowder yep. with... Uh, and you had to shoot, with a, you shoot it with a twenty two to blow it, to, it, it detonates is what it does? <laughs> boom! I've yeah. got some video of it. Uh, so it detonates and, and it does what? It goes boom? It goes boom, it yeah. goes boom <laughs> and uh, if you pack it into the old beaver dam, it goes boom and, and blows And you shoot it from afar with a, with a weapon. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah, but it's it is stable. Cool. It won't blow up on you. You drop it or anything. It's, no. You, yeah. have, you have to shoot it with a high-powered <laughs> Can you get it wet? Uh, well, yeah, it's in a little closed container. Ours yeah, are just in so jars. So I'm pack not, the jar in there and shoot the jar. Yeah, you're not going to buy this at Fleet Farm, are you? I don't oh, yeah. Know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think really? you probably can. I mean, yeah, I, absolutely. I'm sure they have it at Fleet Farm. One Generally. more thing was exciting for me. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was going to yes. say, speaking of Fleet Farm, I know I'll let Zep talk about what's going on. Yes, because sir. it is summer, but I want to give a big shout-out to Alumacraft and the boys and girls <laughs> down in St. Peter. I'm blessed to run that T-Pro all over the Midwest. And yeah. thank you for sponsoring the show. Lakes Trading Company, if you're still looking to sight in your rifle, or get a gun or maybe a concealed carry class, go up there and say hello. And I always talk about pimping out your truck for hunting or fishing season. Go up to Custom Truck and Accessories. And they got some deal going on tonight, right? They've got their big truck show and swap meet up there, their mud truck show and swap meet. It goes on until dark up there. It's happening right now, straight up Highway 65. And don't forget, with summer here, whether you're going on a road trip or you're just going down the road to the store, you're going to need a great set of tires. Doreen Mills Fleet Farm. Destination Summer Drive Event. You're going to get up to a $70 prepaid card when you purchase a new set of four qualifying Cooper tires. We've been talking about the Midwest, boys and girls. It's time to get way out of the Midwest. Go exotic. Get a lot bigger. Our guest when we come back, Ben Chansey. And I'm guessing you have already know a little bit something about Ben Chansey if you've been on the Internet sometime in the last week. Pretty cool. Here, Tiki and Tierney. Weekday morning starting at 8. I'm Tiki Barber, and you're listening to 105 The Ticket. Montoya. Howard, Dixon, Ray Hall, Andretti, Castro Nevis. Great drivers, great races. The Verizon Indy Car Series on Sports Radio 105, the ticket. Ray Hall slug around Marco Andretti. Will power the leader. Now they start to tuck in. All the way to the bottom of the track, let's turn it down. Sunday, the Indy Car Circuit heads to the Milwaukee Mile for the ABC Supply Wisconsin 250. Coverage begins at 4 p.m. Hear the best of the Verizon Indy Car Series on 105, the ticket. Better bring a truck. Mills Fleet Farm's stock up sale is now. Extra laundry detergent and nice and fluffy fabric softener are on sale. So are men's Wrangler 20X jeans. Stock up on Tidy Cat's Glade cat litter that has a clean spring scent. Save on five quart jugs of Mobile Super 5000 motor oil. Keep pool water clean with long lasting Clorox Pool and Spa Extra Blue Chlorinating Tablets. And everyone loves almonds. They're on sale too during the stock up sale at Mills Fleet Farm. Love it. This is your 105 to ticket weather from Nature's Fury. Not much rain the next couple days. Tonight, low of 59. Tomorrow, warming up. Mostly sunny. High of 83. Friday, a great start to your weekend as well. High of 85 and mostly sunny. The rain may come on Saturday. Hanging around 83 for a high, about a 50-50 chance of rain. Same chance on Sunday, but warmer. High of 89 for your weekend. This weather update brought to you by Nature's Fury. You can find Nature's Fury at your local Cub Foods and select holiday stores. Hi, this is Brian up and there's no doubt our early spring and seasonable temps have combined for one of the best open water fishing seasons in Minnesota. 
doesn't matter if you're fishing off the end of the dock or laying on a river bank or getting the boat out and chasing the monsters in deeper water. Right now is what my dad calls the sweet spot in the fishing season. And you might be surprised just how many great fishing spots there are near where you live. I often go to the Minnesota DNR site. And on the left, click on fishing. And under where to go, you'll find the lake finder. Also, try clicking on fishing in your neighborhood. Lots of great info there. And don't forget your 2015 fishing license. You can do it online in minutes on the same website. Licenses.dnr.state.mn.us. Select the license permit you want to buy and submit your payment and print it out. Or if it's easier to remember, you can just search Minnesota Fishing License and go to the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources site. Maybe I'll see you on the water. The Ticket Outdoors is proud to be a partner with Lakes Trading Company. Why? Because they kick <laughs> That's why. Guns to buy, guns to shoot, guns to rent, and the best prices on ammo around. We love Lakes Trading Company because they eat, sleep, and breathe guns just like us. Looking to get a permit to carry class or renew your old permit? Don't be disappointed by a cut-rate instructor. Lakes Trading Company has top-notch instructors and on-site range and meals provided. Lakes Trading Company, off 8th Street in Forest Lake or online at lakestradingco.com. Steve, Mr. Sinski here of Coldwell Banker Burnett. It's time, my friend. If you're a Ticket Outdoors fan, then you're also a fan of hunting and fishing. I've got 29 years in real estate licensed in both Minnesota and Wisconsin, and I'll consider it a privilege to help you find that perfect lake home or the 40-acre piece of heaven that's hiding a Boone and Crockett right now. Hey, check me out on Facebook or email stru at stru.com. It's your money. Thanks. And thanks for having fun with us on the Ticket Outdoors. Now back to Ticket Outdoors, only on Sports Radio 105, The Ticket. We rerun it every Sunday morning from 6 to 8. You can catch the podcast sometime in the next day or two at 105theticket.com. Yes, screw. I have such an ego. I get up every morning at uh, Sunday morning at 6 o'clock and get the Sunday morning paper, a cup of coffee, and I listen to the show to see how I screwed up or if, or if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm going to jail or what. But uh, I really do enjoy Sunday mornings. Hey, my gorgeous wife sh- shared this with me. Diana's in Shatek. How you doing, sweetheart? A woman's poem, all right? Mm. Before I lay me down to sleep, I yeah. pray for a man who's not a creep. <laughs> one who's handsome, smart, and strong. One who loves to listen long. One who thinks before he speaks. And one who calls, not waits for weeks. Uh, send me a king to make me a queen. A man who loves to cook and clean. Now, now that's the poem. Now, Zep. Oh, that's sweet. I shared this with Zep later on, and earlier yeah. before the show started. So Zep said, he wrote this. Now, he's quick. Here's Zep's poem. I pray for a deaf-mute gymnast, nymphomaniac with big boobs, owns a bar and a golf course, loves motorcycles and fishing and drinking. This doesn't rhyme. I don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> Call the request line. That's Zepp's fool. Hey, well, who do we have on the air, pal? Who well, hey, have next? let's give a quick shout-out to our listeners. Thank you guys for supporting us for this two-hour show. And don't forget to follow us at Facebook.com backslash The Ticket Outdoors. Zepper, All right. take it home, buddy. You know who else has a Facebook page and a couple of websites? Ben Chancy. Uh, ben, welcome to Ticket Outdoors. Great to, ha- great to be here. If, uh, where are we calling you? Down in Florida somewhere would be my guess. Yes, we're uh, over on Florida this time of year. Hey, Ben, uh-huh. Ben, I've seen some of your videos. It's, it's great to be any place in your life, right? It's, it, you're lucky you're around here these days. Uh, yeah, there's some pretty cool stuff going on. <laughs> Let me introduce you to Ben Chancy. Ben, there's a pretty good chance you already know who this guest is if you've been on the Internet any time in the last few days. I heard about it out in the middle of South Dakota. We're out at Great Plains hunting, and I somebody in the family said, oh, my God, you see that video of the guy in the kayak with the shark? Oh, no, I didn't. So we all have to crowd into Dad's little office there and pull up the old computer and watch the video of this nut job out in a kayak who's hooked a shark on a fishing line, and he's doing the whole thing, and the kayak, sort of kayak, kind of, kayak canoe, flips over on him. He paddles like a son of a gun. <laughs> you're just waiting for the shark. You're waiting for the Jaws theme and the blood in the water, and his buddies pull him out, so what do they do? You still got him on the line, and they throw him back in the boat. That, boys and girls, is our guest on the phone right now, Ben Chancy. <laughs> ben, tell us a little bit about your life. Well, uh, I'll give you guys a great example. So today I had a client from uh, up uh, up north somewhere. I, I should remember, but I don't. Everything's anyway. up north of Florida. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> exactly. He was uh, on the boat with me today, and we were doing something kind of like what was in the video. And uh, we dropped down a Bonita to catch a big fish, and, and he caught a Goliath grouper today, like 350 pounds. A 350-pound grouper. 
Yeah. That's almost a tie. We're going to tell our listeners, but that's almost a throwback from what you guys have been catching. But go ahead. I'm sorry, Ben. Uh, yeah, no, but it was ginormous to him. And he, after one fish, he uh, his back locked up, his arms locked up, and uh, <laughs> that's all he could handle. <laughs> Uh, now, Ben, listen, I, I should put a plug in here uh, because I went to your YouTube channel, which is Chew On This TV. I just went to yeah. Chew On This on YouTube, and uh, you guys have a whole bunch of videos on there. And it would be fair to call you guys, I know this word gets tossed around a lot, especially with this generation, extreme anglers, right? Yeah, we kind of feature going after the biggest of the big fish that, we can get to that yeah. are you know reachable close to shore or near shore or inshore those are what we go after we we put our well one second boom we put on our facebook page ticket outdoors the abc news video of fishermen in kayak versus shark that's the video we're talking about but also go to chew on this tv dot tv or just google chew on this charter is what i did and it brings up your website so um uh, Boomer, go ahead. You had a question for Ben. You know, Ben, uh, I, I go on a lot of different trips here in the Midwest and typically just taste, chase walleyes and or hook walleyes. To ben might points. not even know what a walleye, walleye is. is. <laughs> but nothing the size of 300 pounds. Where do you guys brainstorm? You're like, you know what, dude? I'm going to go out in a kayak with a rod that floats, and I'm going to go try to nail a 400-pound shark. I mean, how do you come up with these ideas? Well, um, beer. we've been doing our, our show. Tequila. Our, our our show chew on this has been uh going it's been on TV since it started back in 2004, and uh, in 2004 you know we didn't have video on demand or any of that type of stuff. So whenever it first aired, um, we caught some of the giant grouper and some giant sharks, and people would call up the network and ask them to replay the video, and um, they said, hey, it doesn't work that way. You gotta wait till the show re-airs if it ever re-airs. And at that time, we only got to show it once to people. And if they didn't see it at that moment in time, you know, you just didn't get a chance to see it. So once this YouTube came out back in 2007, we got a chance to uh, put the show out so where the masses could see it, where people up in Minnesota would be able to see it and all over the world. And, um, you know, they saw us catch a lot of giant grouper. I think the largest grouper we caught was over 600 pounds on the show. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how you pull something like that out of the water. Although, I guess, you know, uh, you know, we've been down on some tuna trips in the Gulf and stuff like that where you get, you know, tuna, you know, into that neighborhood of 600 pounds. And we know how you do it. But you guys are pulling these things up with sort of modified kayaks. Or is it just a your average kayak? Well, no, it's, it's an average kayak. It's, a, it's called an Old Town Predator. And uh, the, the funny thing about the video and, and the kayak stuff I've done a few shows out of kayaks, but the only time I'm ever in a kayak is to do a show. I think that was maybe my fifth time ever being in a kayak. That's cool. <laughs> That's you, cool. You looked a little shaky. Of course, you did have a shark on the line uh, talking about fishermen in kayak versus shark, the video that's gone viral. And how many, do you know even how many views that Two thing million. has had? Two million views? Yeah, I mean, we have two million on, on, on our YouTube channel and then um, between all the uh, networks and everybody that's covered it all around the world, it's probably 25 million plus now. <laughs> God. You get any money out of that? You must be rich. <laughs> and, you know, we get everything we do is uh, through YouTube. Um, as far as all the networks and stuff like that, you know, I look at it as, um, you know, if I had to pay to be on one of those networks and say, hey, advertise me and advertise my business or advertise Chew on this, I think it would be a heck of a lot more than I can afford. So yeah, when they come to me for free to say, hey, we want to talk about your show and talk about what happened, you know, I think it's a smart business move to say, all right, let's work together. Yeah, Our guest on. is Ben Chancey, Chew on this charter group down in Florida where they specialize in some extreme big fishing boomer yeah so ben you, you said with all the networks combined about 25 million views explain to our listeners i think this would be really cool i was talking to producer mark about this before the show what is it like to have a viral video of 25 million views i mean walk us through the last week so you, you catch this shark we'll get into the adventure there what happens? You put it on YouTube. Next thing you know, it's going viral. Explain to our listeners what that's like. And how does how has that changed your life, if it has? Well, kind of the way it worked out is we uh, we actually shot the show the Thursday before last. And after you know, after I got out of the 
<laughs> after we you know, finished with the shark and did everything, and I got a chance to view the video, you know, we all got around and looked at it, kind of like what you guys did, and looked at it and go, wow, that's that's pretty entertaining. That's really fun. <laughs> yes, it is. But at that point in time, I knew, you know, I had some charters to finish running and that stuff, so I'm like, I'm not going to have a chance to edit this and put it on YouTube and, you know, get it to where it'll, it'll be the best that it can be. So I edited it to like 1.30 at night whenever I got back into town on Tuesday, and I put it to publish to YouTube on Wednesday morning. So I left, went to work charter on Wednesday morning. By the time I came back, I had done a fair amount of views, but nothing great. And then NBC started getting a hold of me, ABC. The first people that got a hold of me was Inside Edition. And they called and said, hey, this is awesome. This is the most amazing footage we've ever seen. Can we put you on the air now? So they called up, and, and as soon as I got home, I was on Inside Edition. And then it went from Inside Edition to Fox to ESPN to, uh, I think I was on Today Show the next morning. Boy. And once the news people get a hold of you when a video does something like that, it's kind of like uh, you're getting ripped apart. Not in a negative sense. They just all want a piece of you at one time. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult to schedule everybody, especially yeah. around your schedule. If you've got a normal job that you do to get everything scheduled, to do all the interviews that you need to do, yeah. um, very difficult. Now you know what it feels like to be chum. I think. Uh, exactly. <laughs> ben, ben Chancy, we're going to take a little break. When we come back, we want to talk about Chew on This Fishing Charters. I'm on the website right now. For our listeners, uh, during the break, if you're listening to the show at home on 105theticket.com, don't run off. We've got another segment here with Ben Chancy. But just uh, Google or whatever search engine you have, uh, punch in Chew on This and go there. We're going to talk about the, the charter service. This isn't your uh, run out of Mille Lacs and catch a couple of walleye charter service. When we come back, Ben Chancy. Fancy. Ticket Outdoors on 105 The Ticket. Better bring a truck. Mills Fleet Farm's stock up sale is now. Extra laundry detergent and nice and fluffy fabric softener are on sale. So are men's Wrangler 20X jeans. Stock up on Tidy Cat's Glade cat litter that has a clean spring scent. Save on five quart jugs of Mobile Super 5000 motor oil. Keep pool water clean with long lasting Clorox Pool and Spa Extra Blue Chlorinating Tablets. And everyone loves almonds. They're on sale too during the stock up sale at Mills Fleet Farm. Love it. If you love the outdoors, then you probably have a truck that you love, too. Custom truck accessories can help protect your truck from the rigors of outdoor activities. They have custom seat covers and floor mats to protect against the mud and dirt from the field. Toppers and tonneau covers to protect your gear. If you're a truck guy, you'll appreciate the knowledge and experience of the Custom Truck Accessories crew. Visit CustomTruckAccess.com or stop by their store to see what a difference being family-owned can make for you. Well... Minnesota fishing season is officially here, and it's time to hit your favorite lakes and fishing spots. Boomer here with the Ticket Outdoors, and I want to thank Alumacraft for being our official boat sponsor. I just got off the water with my Alumacraft T-Pro, and boy, do I love the space, storage, and sweet ride on the water. I love Alumacraft because they're made right here in Minnesota, and they're simply the best aluminum boat on the market. For more about Alumacraft, visit your local dealer or go to alumacraft.com. Now back to Ticket Outdoors, only on Sports Radio 105 to Ticket. Here we are. Oh, we're sitting here on Chew on This Fishing Charters. Uh, if you've checked that out on the computer, I know we got a lot of folks out there driving around right now. So we'll make sure it's all up on our Facebook and our Ticket Outdoors webpage. Our guest, Ben Chancy. Now, Ben, uh, Chew on This Fishing Charters, is this your charter or you just have the guinea pig that they throw out in the kayak to fish for sharks? No, that's me. That's actually me. So uh, right. I, I'm kind of a one-man band. Kind of do it all. Okay, cool. Now let's uh, go back. Before we get into Chew on This Fishing Charters, which is a pretty unique uh, charting outfit down there in Florida, and you said you have a bunch of Minnesota clients, let's rewind and go back to that shark video because I know a lot of our listeners saw it, and if they didn't, they're going to see it very soon. It's up on our Facebook page. We're, we're using you to get Facebook hits, just like everybody else is. Tell us about how you ended up in a kayak. What kind of shark was it? Were you baiting it? Were you fishing for sharks? There you go. That's right. the question how'd right that, there. How'd that happen? Yeah. All right. Well, here's the situation. So we arrived in my boat. Um, it's a 23-foot Dorado, so it's a decent-sized boat, and we had the kayak inside of that. Well, we had already caught our bait. We were using um, 
you're using scaled sardines or pilchards, uh, according to what you want to call them. And what we do is we get there and we start chumming out those bait. Once we do that, the bonita come, and the bonita are kind of like little tuna. Okay. And they they were ranging between 12 and 20 pounds. So we were trying to catch the tuna or the um, bonita, and when we catch the bonita, the sharks start chasing the bonita that we've got on the end of our line. So the bonita fight like 10 times harder than they would if you normally caught them because they don't want to get eaten. <laughs> So you can tell there's a shark nearby is what you're saying, right? But, but Depending on how the bonita fight? Oh, no, there's like 10 sharks by that, but it, it gets better. But not only are the sharks swimming around, they're darting, trying to eat what we're trying to reel in. There's the giant goliath grouper that are underneath it. So the grouper, when they start seeing the bonita swim around, they start raising up from the bottom. We were fishing about 40 feet of water. So they start raising up off of the wreck. And when they see that bonita around, they're trying to chomp on it and eat it like a giant largemouth bass. So if the, if the grouper doesn't get the bonita, usually the shark does. And if you're lucky enough to get it past the shark and the goliath grouper, then you'll have bait. So that's how we started this whole thing off. All these sharks and everything are all wild up. The grouper are wild up. And we're actually doing on that show, we actually showed up there trying to catch one of the giant Goliath grouper. So we were using a rod and reel that had cable. Uh, it had very, you know, the line was um, like 468-pound test line. The rod was a near unlimited class. And we were fishing about 50 pounds of drag because we have to stop those big grouper from getting into the wreck. So we have to put a lot of pressure on them. I'm sorry, into the what? Uh, into the wreck. Oh, okay, into the wreck. A wreck, a sunken boat. Yeah. So we're, we're fishing them, and at the beginning of the shot, I drop down, and as I'm sitting there, I see all these sharks circling around my boat, around the support boat, and the boat that was next to me. Well, I make a comment, and I go, oh, I kind of know what they feel like on Jaws, because all these sharks are so... Uh, <laughs> we're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> so so you're, you're Captain Ben Chancey. You've been at this for a while, but you're a little nervous in this little kayak that you're in. Like you said, you're not in your... Are you in the 16-footer now? No, I was in the kayak. So you're in the kayak out there with the sharks, and now everybody's all hungry. You got to, you rang the dinner bell. Exactly. So so they're in their feeding frenzy type deal. <laughs> oh, so, are you drunk? <laughs> no, no, I wasn't going out to the sharks, though. Oh, okay. When you drop your bait and you get it below the shark, then usually the goliath grouper eat it. Okay. Usually the goliaths eat before the sharks do because, they actually, believe it or not, the goliaths are kind of like the king. They're the lion. Of that domain. Okay, now you, you keep saying Goliath grouper. Uh, so for us uneducated here in the Midwest, what's a, a an average grouper way, and what's the difference? A Goliath grouper, obviously, the name suggests, is a bigger class of grouper, or are they all Goliath grouper? I don't know. No, these grouper at this particular spot this time of year, most of them are four to five hundred pounds. Jesus, how old are, are those fish? fish? Uh, between 30 and 35 years old. Man. You know, Ben, you talked about your, your setup with the kayak. Zepp asked you about that, and you talked about your rod and the 50-pound drag to keep the groupers out of their wreck. When going through that video, it looked like when your kayak had tipped over, you kind of had something to hold the rod up. Was it floating? How did? How was it when the kayak flips over that your rod right. stayed with the kayak? Well, since we knew we were going after a giant fish, you always want to clip your rod off. Whether you're inside of a boat or you're, you know, inside your normal boat or you're inside of a kayak, if you're going to, you're going after something that's humongous. Or at any time something bad could happen, you could fall, something happens, and you lose, you know, control of the rod, and there goes the rod overboard, and then you lose, you know, thousands of dollars. Okay, so, so you're in your kayak and you're trying to get your, uh, trying to get your bait fish, your bonita in. Yes, so we drop the bonita down, and what happens in the beginning of the of the, of the video, a uh, giant glass group, I mean, this thing was eight foot long, ate our bait. And that's what took me flying in the beginning that almost flipped me over. And it took me so fast and so hard that it pulled the rod out of my hand at the very beginning of the shot uh, at the, as soon as I got hooked up. So I let go, and fortunately, that giant Goliath, he didn't like it, so he let go. I didn't get a hook in it. Which okay. is good for me because I didn't want to flip over in that situation because I told you all those sharks were around us right there. Yeah. Well, what happened then, as I grabbed the rod, and you'll see in the video as I go to pull it up, 
it didn't look like there was a fish on it, and I didn't feel anything. Then all of a sudden, I feel something again. And that's when the shark ate it. So you're pulling that bonita up now, and it's come up past the grouper, and it's into shark territory. Yeah, well, as soon as I think the um, Goliath grouper spit it out, the shark came by and ate it. There was maybe two seconds before that happened. That's how you get grouper cooties. <laughs> 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 so now you've got it. What kind of sharks are these? These are bull sharks. So, bull? You know, if you oh, sharks, oh they, they don't even bite. Uh, yeah, listen listen to this. Ben Chan, Captain Ben Chancey, our guest with uh, Chew on this, Charters down in Florida. Uh, bull shark, because I know I like Shark Week like everybody else. It's actually on right now, and I, I understand you have a Shark Week special down there, but everybody know when they do the top ten most dangerous sharks. Isn't bull number one? Number one. Yeah, number one because they attack more. Bull, I guess bull I was sharks wrong. will attack and even more so than great white because of the the number of times they attack. Most people that are attacked, that one in Nantucket that inspired Jaws right. back in the early 1900s or late 1800s, yeah. that was a bull shark. And they can often get out of salt water, and sometimes they'll find them up salt water rivers. So you got bull sharks, which pretty much are known to eat and bite anything. They're just scrappers and the most dangerous shark according to Shark Week, and that's what you're in the water with, and you've got one on the end of a fishing rod <laughs> in a kayak. You guys may, you guys are making me rethink my, uh, my whole My, <laughs> my whole career, career. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You oughta. Mom's real proud, right? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, now you hook this bull shark, and is that where we kind of start watching in the video? Because you're, you're fighting with it. The, I mean, what would what'd you think you were going to do with a bull shark? Pull him up alongside the kayak like a grouper? Uh, yeah, you know, we gotta, what, what happens is, is the, the only thing that made what I did more dangerous than your average kayak fishing. Yeah, it's uh, fall out of the boat. Fish, yeah. Well, I only had about <laughs> 60, I only had about 65 feet of line on my reel. Oh. Mm. So I couldn't allow it to have any line. If it had line, it would have spooled me all the way to the bottom and then uh, who knows what happened then. So <laughs> I was fighting this fish with nearly no drag. Because I had to, because we were group proficient. So I started fighting, and, and, and in the video, you'll see it just starts taking me off the sea. And the guys have to crank up the uh, support boat and start chasing me down because, you know, it's it's taking me away. I'm not I'm not gonna. <laughs> I, I couldn't do anything about it. I was on a sleigh ride. There goes Captain Chancy. There he goes. Yeah. That's Man. pretty much what they said in the video. Cause, you know, I didn't, I wasn't there when they said it, but they go, there he goes. <laughs> you can't see it hey, Ben, Ben, when that fish took you out of the boat and you, you, uh, swam as quick, you look, you look like Benny Hill going to, to that, to the support boat, but, uh, don't, don't sharks go after things that are moving real quickly? Did you ever think about just laying there? <laughs> Seriously, and, 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 and well, what went through your head? I mean, you only have a couple of seconds here to think. Well, yes. What I actually tried to do, there's another video that shows it from a different perspective. I actually tried to get on top of the kayak first. And when I tried to get on top of the kayak, I realized, hey, my feet are down there still dangling. Mm -hmm. And whenever I said, okay, this is not a good idea. So Those tasty off, legs. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever I took off for the support boat, um, as I take off from the support boat, you can see from the shot that you shoot at a downward angle. You can see the shark is right underneath the bottom of the kayak, like you know, kind of where my yep. feet were dangling. Yeah, that, and, and that Jesus part, and then Lord. and then your buddies get you pulled out of there pretty quick. You don't have far to go, but you did a quick paddle. Obviously, they get you out of the water, and you're thinking to yourself, watching the video, "Whew, boy, that old boy made it! I can't believe it!" Yeah, and then yeah. what'd you do? You got back in that damn kayak. Oh well, you gotta get back in the kayak because you guys, if you're no. a fisherman, and you lose the big fish, <laughs> yeah. don't, don't we all want to catch the big fish? Yeah, a big fish, yeah, a big shark, and I don't know. <laughs> they're, they're the same in my book. So all right, all right. You lose that big fish, right? Yeah. Don't we all want a second shot at that big fish? You know, hey, we lost it, whatever. It broke our line. It got us around a stump. Whatever happened. Yeah, you did. I was like Boomer. Back. I was surprised that the rod was still tethered to the boat, but yeah. you had it clipped on. And they said your rod's still there, and you didn't really hesitate. You were just a thousand one, thousand two, and you were back in that kayak. Oh yeah, we're gonna get him now. And so <laughs> at some point in time, hey, let's let's uh, get him back up top. But you know, you didn't get to see it in the video. But actually, after I got back in the kayak, he got a little. He got a little ticked off one more time and took off real fast, and he actually pulled the rod out of my hand one more time. So if I wouldn't allowed the let him pull the rod out of my hand and, and had it tethered, then he probably would have flipped me over again. And 
after one time, like you guys are saying, that was probably enough. A second time, I really didn't want anything to do with that. Go ahead, Boomer. Yeah, so Ben, I didn't get to see the end of the video or the one I saw from ABC News, and we got about three minutes left. Is So you get back in the kayak, he takes that nasty run on you one more time. Do you land the shark, and, and what do you do in a kayak? How do you bring a shark in, and how do you get the damn hook out of its mouth? <laughs> well, here's what happened. We got it up to the boat. You know, when you when you get a big shark, good question. When you get a big shark up there, what do you do now? Well, I can't pull him on top of the boat. I can't do anything. So once he's to the side of the boat, that's, you know, there's really nothing else I can do with it. So the rest of the time, we were trying to crash into the kayak with the big boat so we could get to it and get the shark off. Fortunately, the shark kind of swam around a little bit, and as they tried to get to me, he got on the trolling motor, and I flipped the reel to let him, to let him get loose, and we got the hook out of him then. Wow. Our a guest, story, boy. Be- Captain Ben Chancy, chew on this fishing charters out of Florida, and you can punch that in on YouTube, and you'll watch them with the Goliath groupers and the tarpons and the bull sharks. And uh, so I think uh, there was a hammerhead on there. Strew, one quick one, then one, we got to get one quick one. Okay, I want to come from Minnesota down to Florida and spend two days with you. Give me a, give me a, give me the cost. How much going to, what's, what's it going to cost me? <laughs> uh, you know, hey, everything's on the website. We got trips from four hundred fifty dollars to a thousand dollars. But depending on what people want to do, you know, just check it out on the website, and it'll it'll lead you in the right direction. Well, wow. I'm, uh, uh, Captain Chancy, I'm here on your website, and I'm looking, and you've got a variety of monster hammers to bull sharks that you talk about. Now, let's uh, let our listeners know they're not going to be in a kayak with you <laughs> fishing for bull sharks, right? <laughs> No, 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 no more, no more people jumping in kayaks. Uh, that's, that's, uh, we'll take that for the performance. Would you say chew on this? Florida fishing charters is sort of unique in your area, uh, as far as, I mean, you're going out after some really big, huge monsters. Yeah, you know, um, I like going after the fish that are most aggressive and, uh, give us the biggest thrill. And that's kind of what we do in our charters as well. Now, uh, does anybody get to keep these, the big groups or the, or even the bull sharks? Is that something you're able to harvest or keep or people, mount? People don't usually keep the bull sharks. When we do mount things, it's always a measurement and they do the fiberglass mount. And then the glass group are all protected. So we get to catch them and release them. And then the next person gets to come and catch them. I've got my producer wrote something here, Ben, that says Shark Week Special. What's that mean? Shark Week Special? <laughs> uh, we don't know. Our producer Isn't sometimes... Isn't it Discovery Channel, like it's Shark Week, and they're showing oh, all kinds of shark stuff? Well, I thought I'd be polite and ask. I thought maybe, like, Brian, I'm glad you asked me that. Just this week only, if you want right now. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We've got a we've got a producer that it drinks a lot of beer while he works. So, uh, Ben Chancy, again, go to YouTube, chew on this, or if you go to ABC News, you're going to find that video just about anywhere on YouTube, and then uh, punch into your search engine, chew on this floor of fishing charters or chew on this fishing charter and it's something worth checking out especially when it gets cold up here go down and once you watch the videos you'll realize how safe these guys are how responsible even ben looks like a pretty i mean he sounds like a kid when we're talking yes to him he on does the phone. yeah but yeah. then you look at the videos he's a big old tough guy that appears to know what he's doing out there in those boats and they are catching some monsters very quick while we have 30 seconds tell us about the 600 pound grouper because that video to me was every bit as sensational as the bull shark in the kayak well the the 600 pound grouper we actually went to four guys on that one and it got it got pulled up the same spot where we um got hooked on the bull shark it got into the wreck three or four times and finally i grabbed it by hand and handlined it the rest of the way oh, oh no. my lord yeah, i saw i thought. saw your handline in this now when you say wreck what kind of wreck is this it's a sunken barge. Okay. About 100 footer. Okay, sounds good. And they tend to like uh, maybe our bass. They like that structure. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. They're almost like bass. Wow. Chew on Jeez. this, Florida uh, Charter Fish Guide. Captain Ben Chancy, it's an amazing story. Thanks for taking some time. I know you've got everybody and their brother and sister coming at you for an interview. We appreciate you taking some time, and we hope some Minnesota folks come on down and say hi. Hey, thanks for having me aboard. It was great. Happy thanks, fishing. Buddy. Be careful, man. Thank you. You All bet. Right. All right, there he goes, Ben Chancy. Who wants to talk some bass fishing is that, now? Is that, <laughs> is that Bonita Springs? Is that where he is? 
Uh, I don't know. You know, we didn't ask that. I didn't, uh, I was looking earlier on their website and, uh, Fort Myers, uh, Pine Island, uh, Boca Grande. You know, Grande, that's where I go right? out of Fort Myers when I go tarpon down there? fishing. Okay, so you know that and yep. they do the tarpon out yep. there, the uh, Goliath tarpon down there. So, all right, we'll chew on this. And while you chew on that, we're going to go get our next guest, Terry Ellis, Midwest Bass Magazine. Mm-hmm. What do you mean you never heard of it? You will in a minute. Pharrell and events. Tune in every weeknight at 9 in the Twin Cities. Sports Radio 105, the ticket. From the locker room to your radio, tune in the wake-up call. From the writers of Cold Omaha, every Sunday morning at 8. Trey Wayne's getting a lot of work at the slot. I think he wants to get guys out of their comfort zone. Sometimes if you are in a place where you're comfortable, you learn things by playing differently positions. You play different physically. I think you're going to see different routes. The game changes when you move inside. The Wake Up Call with Cold Omaha on Minnesota's Sports Radio. 105 The Ticket. Better bring a truck. Mills Fleet Farm Stock Up Sale is now. Extra laundry detergent and nice and fluffy fabric softener are on sale. So are men's Wrangler 20X jeans. Stock up on Tidy Cat's Glade cat litter that has a clean spring scent. Save on five quart jugs of Mobile Super 5000 motor oil. Keep pool water clean with long lasting Clorox Pool and Spa Extra Blue Chlorinating Tablets. And everyone loves almonds. They're on sale too during the Stock Up Sale at Mills Fleet Farm. Love it. Steve Strasinski here of Coldwell Banker Burnett. It's time, my friend. If you're a Ticket Outdoors fan, then you're also a fan of hunting and fishing. I've got 29 years in real estate licensed in both Minnesota and Wisconsin, and I'll consider it a privilege to help you find that perfect lake home or the 40-acre piece of heaven that's hiding a Boone and Crockett right now. Hey, check me out on Facebook or email stru at stru.com. It's your money. Thanks. And thanks for having fun with us on the Ticket Outdoors. The Ticket Outdoors is proud to be a partner with Lakes Trading Company. Why? Because they kick That's why. Guns to buy, guns to shoot, guns to rent, and the best prices on ammo around. We love Lakes Trading Company because they eat, sleep, and breathe guns just like us. Looking to get a permit to carry class or renew your old permit? Don't be disappointed by a cut rate instructor. Lakes Trading Company has top-notch instructors and on-site range and meals provided. Lakes Trading Company, off 8th Street in Forest Lake or online at lakestradingco.com. Now back to Ticket Outdoors, only on Sports Radio 105, the ticket. Yeehaw, boys and girls. Now we're cooking with Crisco. Sunday morning, 6 to 8, or the podcast on TicketOutdoors.com. Hey, Diana, you better get back into town here because Brian's trying to set me up with some... Don't. Somebody. Do not get me into trouble with your beautiful Brian. And don't forget to follow us, folks, at Facebook.com backslash the Ticket Outdoors. You'll find Ben Chansey's video up there. Also, you'll find uh, Midwest Bass Magazine's link up there. And true, thank you, by the way, your show prep material. I know this is one of your guests. A lot of fun. Uh, Terry is. And I love true. Everybody, you know, sends you the art. Articles, they'll send you the link. Strew will go in and Xerox it, then take a picture with his phone <laughs> and send it to you. <laughs> Trying to read his, and that's actually how I read my first a Midwest Bass Magazine article. Hey, before we get to Terry Ellis from the Midwest Bass Magazine, I'll tell you what, this is kind of fun. I'll tell you how I got to that. But something else, I w- Terry, the, the first part of the show, the first 15 minutes that we, we were on, the, the boys and I just BS because we've got – we talk about what happened last week and all that, and we're telling different stories. One thing I forgot to mention to you guys, something happened to me uh, Saturday or Sunday that's never happened to you, Zepp, in the state of Minnesota. I'm coming back from Chatek, Wisconsin, and Terry Ellis is going to be fishing in a bass tournament this weekend in Chatek. And I'm coming down Highway 95. You're, Brian Zepp's yep. a big bike rider. Mm-hmm. Coming down 95 between Osceola and Forest Lake. No, it will. And what do I see on the west side of Highway 95? A black bear. Oh, did you? About maybe a two miles north of Forest Lake. Yeah. Oh, right, wow. Right on the edge of the road, looking out of the woods. You're right was, on the edge of that black bear country up there, it too. It was really so. cool. And I, I might have seen maybe three or four black bear in my entire life in the woods, yeah. but nothing nothing this close to the Twin Cities. That was kind of cool. So. That old boy or girl was a little south. So good. Yeah. Terry Ellis, Midwest Bass Magazine. Welcome to Ticket Outdoors. Thank you very much. Good to have you on. You know, this article, Strew, uh, where was this article Here's from? Here's what happened. Uh, uh, Terry... And Terry, we, my wife and I have a place in Chatek, Wisconsin, have been going up there for 30 years, and, and we were in the uh, Rod and Gun Bait Shop, and it's got a huge walleye or bass uh, on the outside well, of the... Well, which is it? Which walleye is it? Or bass? I don't know. I don't, it's a big fish. I forget what it looks like. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's how good I am. No, no, it's a, no, 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 no. It's no. a huge sunfish no, or a no, tarpon. No, no. <laughs> hey, Jerry, Jerry, yeah. screw these guys. On the outside of the on the outside of the store, there's uh, a big mount of. It's a phony thing. It looks like yeah, a fish, okay. right? Gotcha. So screw, screw all of you guys. <laughs> anyway, so my wife and I were there uh, over the Fourth of July weekend, buying some bait and screwing around and all that. Mm. And I see this magazine. I never saw it before. I pick it up. It is called, whatever it was called. What's it called? No, Midwest Bass it. Magazine. Yeah. And I, I thought it was really cool. I read the whole thing, took a bunch of notes, and I see that this is the first issue of this magazine. And I don't know where it is or how it gets there or how many places it is, but Terry Ellis is the guy who tried to start this about 2000. Terry, tell us about how this magazine started um, and where you guys are, are being published. Well, I'm based out of Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. Yep. And back in about cool. 1999, I had come up with an idea that there's no magazine dedicated to bass fishing in the Midwest. So I started doing some research, uh, came to a few dead ends, did some research on the Internet, uh, got some uh, leads and that. I did fire it up back in 2000, 2001. After about six or seven months, it kind of died on me. And about a few, about a year ago, I decided to... Start it back up again, and here we are, back oh. in 2015, and that's the first issue in your hands. But why? I, what a coincidence that I'm in the the uh, the rod and gun bait store. Why? For the for, and I see the first issue. Why do this now? And why even do this at all? Well, I have a love for bass fishing. I grew up bass fishing uh, here in the Midwest, um, here in Wisconsin mostly. Uh, I read a lot of bass fishing articles, a lot of other magazines. But I feel that the Midwest, there's not a lot of articles out there that pertain to the Midwest. They do touch on them now and then, uh, but I feel a lot of the coverage is you know, in California, down in Texas, Alabama, uh, Florida, more of the southern states. So I wanted to dedicate a magazine to this area. You know, I've been learning a lot, Terry, about bass fishing down south lately. And, you know, I typically would just chase bass up here. I love to go for walleyes. But, you know, during the day, you can go to some of those weed lines and, and chase bass. But is the – you talked about you didn't see a lot of bass magazine coverage up here in the Midwest. And, you know, it's pretty big down south. And so you took this opportunity to run with it. Is the presentation and approach to catching bass in the Midwest different than it is in the south? Well, I feel there's some differences and some similarities. But, you know, in a lot of the other magazines, I have seen um, a lot of articles pertaining to shad and, and the bass following the shad and the shad uh-huh. fun. Up here, we don't have a lot of shad. They do right. in the Mississippi River and some of the lakes in the southern part of the area that I cover. But here, we, we, don't, we don't have shad in the lakes around here. Uh, a lot of your lakes down south are huge, you know, huge reservoirs around here. A lot of, a lot of two, three thousand acre lakes. Uh, even some of the coastal waters, like down in Louisiana and Southern California, they talk about tidal water. So we don't have any tides in our lakes around here at all. So I still feel that there's uh, a need for a, a magazine for this. You know, one thing you didn't mention, Terry, and, and all that kind of makes sense to me, the reservoir systems they have down south versus the lakes we have here, but you didn't mention predatory fish. And I was kind of thinking about that a little bit. Like in the south, they don't have walleyes per se. Now, they do have pike, but I don't think they might have the pike population that we have up here in the Midwest or right. the muskies and walleyes. Does that come into play at all, Terry, when you look at writing this advice in Midwest Magazine, the predatory fish difference when you're chasing bass up here versus down south well i think it does a little bit um it may not so much but you're you're, you're going to be fishing in areas that may contain both fish like when you're when you're fishing smallmouth you may get into a mess of walleyes at the same time or you're always when you're fishing bass in, in the weeds you, you know every once in a while you're going to run to a pike or a musky i've caught all my muskies all my muskies i've ever caught and my biggest pike were always during bass fishing Wow. Yeah, you know, I, and that's a very good point. Uh, first of all, I feel kind of the same way you do. I like to hunt bass here in the Midwest uh, as well. I didn't grow up in Minnesota, so bass were kind of considered the game fish because it was perch and we had a lot of pike right. over in, or still do have a lot of pike over in South Dakota, which dad loves uh, hunting the pike. But uh, I always liked getting on some good bass just because it was a little different fish to get over there. And so the particular area, Rose Hill, where I fished, there was a lot of trees in the water and a lot of structure. And you talk 
talk about tidal waters and some of that area in the southwest uh, or the southeast United States has a lot of that kind of structure down here. And every time I would read a Bass magazine, it was it was always talking about the southeast United States and didn't really have anything in the Midwest. I'm just today, well, actually yesterday when I got Strew's email, uh, finding out about Midwest Bass magazine. And it's a paper, kind of like Outdoor News. Right. And you said you've relaunched it here recently and got it back out. And you've got the website up. And the website, uh, but you don't have any articles yet on the website. I was trying to navigate the website. How's that coming along? Not at the moment. Uh, we're going to presently, in the near future here, we're going to start doing a thing that we're going to feature in, uh, an angler uh, from the Midwest, and we're, doing, we're going to do angler of the month each month. Okay. And then we're also going to list, uh, we're going to also list tournaments in the Midwest, and then we'll eventually, you know, do uh, tournament results and things like that from tournaments throughout the Midwest on the on the website. We're talking with Terry Ellis from Midwest Bass Magazine. Terry, I found it really, really interesting, but one thing that Boomer brought up is that he asked about, you know, the advice that, that is in this publication. It's more than advice. It's, it's a bunch of stories. And I read the whole thing, and I thought I found it really, really interesting about somebody have fishing um, Lake Michigan. People think about Lake Michigan for salmon or lake walleyes trout get, and mean walleyes. And nobody fishes smallmouth there. You're talking about fishing smallmouth in Lake Michigan. I think is where where you were. And you also had something. Somebody did an article about uh, a bait that everybody is aware of for the last 50, 60 years: the jitterbug. And probably, uh, uh, love you, the, I grew yeah, up on the, the jitterbug. The number one yes. bait yeah. still these days for for bass fishing. And the old man, old man, still bait. has them in his tackle. Yeah. Legend, legendary crankbait. Legend. Yes. Yeah. 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 A couple of top. Top bass fishing areas in this area is Lake Michigan and Lake Superior. Really? Yep. Hey, Terry Ellis, let's take a little bit of a break here. We want to keep you around for another segment and talk about bass fishing this year, 2015, open water right here in Minnesota and Wisconsin. He's uh, just relaunched Midwest Bass Magazine. This is Carl Eller. You're listening to 105 The Ticket. Like the taste of fresh apples? Try an Angry Orchard hard cider. At Angry Orchard, we believe in tradition. That's why we use apples from a 100-year-old orchard. It takes two apples to make each bottle of Angry Orchard. So raise a glass to a time when apples were best served in a pint glass. Angry Orchard, when you're looking for something a little different, crisp, refreshing, and not too sweet, just like me. Angry Orchard Hard Cider. Branch out. Angry Orchard Cider Company, Cincinnati, Ohio. Drink responsibly. This is Freddy. Freddy's the father of four young boys. They're good at being vicious beasts. That's why Freddy does not enjoy waiting rooms. At the doctor's office, they tipped over the fish tank and may have chewed a hole in the wall. Proud moments, huh? That's why Great Clips has online check-in. So Frazzled Freddy can check salon wait times and add the boys' names to the list at greatclips.com or with the free app. So Great Clips will be waiting for them, not the other way around. Uh, They need to untie me first to get to my phone. Precious little savages. Great Clips. It's gonna be great. When you need someone to listen, a lawyer you know and trust. Boating season is here and many of you will be hauling a boat to the lake this summer. At Brad Sean Bright, we encourage you to keep yourself and others safe by obeying the laws of the lakes. Keep in mind that children under 10 are required to wear a life jacket at all times. It's also good to make sure that everything on the boat is in working order before heading out into the water. Alcohol causes thousands of boating injuries every year. Remember, the captain is responsible for the crew and cannot be over the legal limit. And please, not only be aware of other boaters in the water, but keep an eye out for water skiers, tubers, and jet skiers. I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. Please do your part to keep yourself and others safe on the lakes this summer. You can find Mike Bryant of Bradshaw and Bryant at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Mike Bryant, seeking justice for the injured. Seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. Call 800-770-7008. From the Mills Fleet Farm Studios, WTVX Lakeville, WRXP Cambridge, WGBZ Eden Prairie. A cumulus station. You save big money, you save big money when you shop Menards. At Menards, you get the lowest prices every day plus sales too. Now during our big sale, save big on a great selection of ceiling fans by turn of the century. They add style and comfort to any room in your home while helping you cool your home more efficiently. 
save big on the 44-inch Stratford ceiling fan. Available in a brushed nickel or a copper brushed finish with etched glass. It's just $129. A 52-inch Sonesta indoor-outdoor fan, also from turn of the century, features a rustic iron finish with frosted white glass. It's great for porches or three-season rooms. Also on sale, only $129. Find this and many more great deals in Menards during our big sale. And while you're shopping, register for your chance to win a 2015 Ford Mustang convertible. Save big money at Menards. Now back to Ticket Outdoors, only on Sports Radio 105, The Ticket. Stream us online, 105theticket.com. If you're out and about, you can catch the podcast in the next day or two on the website as well. And let's not forget our sponsors that let us do this two-hour rambling about hunting and fishing. We wouldn't be out here without our good friends in St. Peter, Minnesota, Alumacraft. Thank you so much for being our official boat and let me run that T-Pro all over the Midwest. Lakes Trading Company, if you want to get a conceal and carry, you want to learn about a gun that you need to box. And don't forget custom truck and accessories if you need to get a topper or something for that truck for hunting season coming up this fall. Go visit the folks at Custom Truck and Accessories. Every Wednesday night during the summer, they've got the big mud truck and swap up there on 65. It's happening right now. I hope they're listening. Hello. And don't forget, now that summer's here, whether you're going on a road trip or just going to the store, even in the summertime, you're going to need a great set of tires. During Mills Fleet Farms Destination Summer Drive Event, you're going to get up to a $70 prepaid card when you purchase a new set of four qualifying Cooper tires. Our guest, Terry Ellis, just relaunched Midwest Bass Magazine. Terry, where can we get it? Uh, you can go to the website, www.midwestbassmagazine.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can order a subscription there and have the hard copy mailed to you. Or you can just enter in your name and email address and there's your city location, and a free digital copy will be emailed to you within a few days. Now, Terry, as you mentioned in the last segment, the web uh, uh, the website is still kind of a work in progress. So right now, people really want the hard copy. That is correct. How often does that come out? Well, we, we did one issue this year, and then we're going to do three more issues next year, and then we'll do three or four issues a year from there on out. Give us a little bit of what's in the issue this year, that if I go to MidwestBassMagazine.com and you know, send me that issue, what are some of the things you've got in there? Uh, we have a little bit about what the uh, first issue is all about and what the uh, magazine is all about. And then we had an issue, a throwback uh, article about the jitterbug that's been out for quite a few years. I got to read that. It's a good story. All right. Yeah, it's a great story. I'm going to get it just for that alone because that was the one when I was a kid. We had one in Dad's tackle box, and you raced. Dad would be, you know, you didn't raid Dad's tackle box. But when you got there, he'd open it up, and he'd take his, and then the rest of us would race to get that dang little chipped-up, you know, beaten and abused jitterbug. And when I started putting my own tackle box together, I've probably bought four or five of them over the years. And now they've got the body has got some hinges in it and it rattles a little bit. Uh, they've messed with it a little bit, but it is just a classic bass crank. Yep. Are you still using that once in a while? Am I still using it? Yeah. No, I have a stolen one. You know, I did have a couple. They were probably after my dad's old ones, and I haven't thrown one in years. No, I still like it. Even when I go up to White Bear for smallies, and, you know, I'll go out and I'll get the worm and I'll do a few different things. Uh, but I still like to just kind of clip it on and just toss it out with my little... uh you know, my, my little Zebco or whatever, and just give it a couple of tosses. Maybe it's a nostalgic thing, but I did hook one up in White Bear here a couple of weeks ago, a smallie. You know, I gill hooked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but still, that counts. Hey, Terry, let's talk about your background a little bit. You know, this is, uh, obviously, there's a there's a huge passion here, and I, my guess is this can absorb your entire life if you're not careful about that. But you... You talked about early fishing with your dad and like a 12 or 14 foot fishing boat with a three horse Johnson, you know, no electronics, whatnot. And you got hooked on this game and you've been hooked ever since. Tell us about your fishing career. Are you doing tournament fishing? What's what's your life all about on the water? Uh, I do do a few tournaments. Uh, Life is busy right now with with kids and all all that. So but I do do tournaments every year. I've done some weekend angler series, uh, which is not a circuit that's around here anymore where you get paired up with a with a, co- a boater, and you either go with an angler or a co-angler. Right. Um, I've done that a few times. And now I do mostly um, team tournament circuit over here in, the, in west central Wisconsin. We do a, we do four tournaments a year on different bodies of water. And you'll be, you'll be in Shitek this weekend, right? 
That is correct. Yeah. And I'm Terry. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, is, is that a one or two day tournament here? I tell you, I really enjoyed getting up at five thirty, six o'clock in the morning, going to the Pacagama, cup of coffee, and watching you idiots <laughs> with your, you know, with your uh, two hundred horsepower engines and fifteen rods. You know what I'm yeah. talking about. And watch you guys take off at 6.30 or 6.45 or 7 o'clock in the morning. And then my lovely wife and I like to sneak back at 3 o'clock and watch you guys come in. It is really fun to watch. But it's, it's, um, it's, um, do, do you practice fish on Saturday or is this a two-day tournament? It's a one-day tournament and, and cutoff was this past Monday. So we are actually up there on the 3rd uh, of July pre-fishing. So what you're talking about cut off for practice fishing, pre fishing? How how many days prior to the tournament is that? We were off limits as of uh, at dark this last Monday. That seems like that's like five or six days. That's a lot. I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah, a lot about of that. a lot of things can change. This this circuit's like that. Some some circuits let you fish right up to the day of the tournament, mm. and others this one doesn't let us do it a week prior. Cool. You know, Terry, in that circuit, is it all uh, artificial bait? Yep, no, uh, no live bait permitted at all. So, Terry, one question I had with that is when we were talking off air, you know, up here, walleye fishing or crappie fishing or let's say a walleye fishing tournament, you know, live bait is considered part of the norm if you're going to use leeches, night crawlers or shiners, and we will use cranks and artificial baits. But then you get in the more traditional bass world, and it's all artificial, and live bait is like, you know, voodoo. You don't touch that. Why? Why is that, Terry, from your opinion? Well, I think part of it is the challenge to go out. I think live bait, you will maybe catch more fish. You know, a lot of people, we've talked to other people that are pan fishing or walleye fishing in the, in the catch bass, and maybe you're not catching them that day in unofficial lures. Um, I think another reason is, too, is if you're throwing out a bobber, a minnow on a bobber or a worm on a bobber, a lot of times you're waiting for that bobber to go all the way down. Well, by that time, that bass might have it swallowed. Right. A, lot of your, a lot of your bass fishermen are catch and release. And so by then it might be too late. You're either clipping that line off or you're ripping it out and they kill that fish. Well, we can't have Terry Ellis from Midwest Bass Magazine on without you doing a little something for the listeners. We want everybody to get their Midwest Bass Magazine, go to the website, put in their information, have this issue sent out. But give us a little something. What are some bass fishing tips that are working in 2015 right in July for you? Right in July. Well, this year I say the best lure I usually throw is what's called a it's called a sweet beaver or a yo mama, depending on what comes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Yo that mama. could go either that way. Could, yeah, <laughs> that could, that could be fishing. <laughs> that could be bar hopping. It could be whatever. But that gets you an old bar fighter yeah. out here. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a it's kind of an artificial crayfish type bait. It's, yeah. it's classified in the creature bait uh, classification. Stop plastic Texas rig. Um, I have a lot of success throughout all phases of the of the year with that spring, summer, and fall. That's cool. So, Terry, you talked about more of the bait presentation, but what what kind of structure would you chase or give advice to our listeners about? Well, it depends on what time of the year. This time of the year, you're usually going to look for uh, maybe some shallower structure, woods, or uh, a deep weed edge with deep water access. A lot of times, those fish going to come up in your in the morning or early evening and come up and feed, they're going to slide up to the shallow areas, but they always want that deep water to be able to slide back down down into and during the day. Um, if it's cooler, they may be up on that shallow area to, for some warmth, and they may up shallow to bite. But if you got some hot weather like coming this coming weekend or was this past weekend, they're going to be down on that deeper edge. You know, Terry, I, I do a few charity tournaments now, and, 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 and God bless them. I just did the Minnesota Teen Challenge yep. up there, which was yep. for a great cause, and I do a few other ones. I, and, and I am by no means a bass expert, but one of the pieces of advice I read in an article and others have told me about is I try to go out of the landings where the local bass tournament was and where they release all the fish, and I really just try to pound the weed lines and the shoreline and the structure near that, yep. and I've yep. seemed to have some luck. Does that make any sense to you, Terry? Oh, God, yeah. These, some of these lakes are pounded. I mean, they have tournaments every weekend. Yeah, fish water. They've done studies. I've seen things done in the past where where fish will travel a mile within two or three days. But some of those fish are definitely going to hang out in that area. If there's forage, if there's enough bait, those fish are going to hang out in those areas. Hey, Terry, how many, story, uh, how many stores carry your magazine right now? And what is your goal for 2016? And how are those magazines distributed? Well, they're currently in, in convenience stores uh, in West Central Wisconsin, mostly the Chippewa Valley. They are free. So you can just go in and pick them up, 
Um, if they can't find one, they can definitely go to the website and email me, email me, and I can let them know a location where they can find one. Or if they're out of that area, they can, you know, as I said before, they can either put their information and get a free digital copy sent to them, or I, or they can sign up for and get a hard copy mailed to them. I can tell you what I read the entire thing, and I said this this publication was only like four or five pages, but every story was really, really interesting. Uh, it's something that if you like fishing at all, especially bass fishing, pick it up. It's well worth We're outdoorsmen. it. Four or five right. pages is all the deeper we'll get into any paper yeah, anyway. I know you're right. And I tell you what, you know, you mentioned it earlier, Strew, that the stories are just as good as advice and tips sometimes Absolutely. because you get a nice chuckle out of that and uh, can learn a lot from a story just except from a straight advice as well. Uh, Terry, you know, you were on the Shatek chain, chain doing your pre-fishing. Where did you Where did you hit some fish? I'll be up there next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you have any waypoints you want to put yeah, on yeah, here, Terry? Yeah. <laughs> we're on We're on the west side of Prairie Lake. Help me out, man. <laughs> Is that the local cavern? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there's a couple of them out there. Yeah, there's a, either a walleye or a bass apparently hanging right up there. <laughs> well, I'll tell you Could what, be you a go giant to the groupers. Eh? I, if you go to the local taverns. <laughs> In Shatek about 11 o'clock at night, I can swear you can catch some of the sweet beaver he was talking about. <laughs> your mama. Or your mama. One of those two is going to be there. Oh. <laughs> Terry Ellis, it's Midwest Bass Magazine. They've got the issue out. Uh, www.midwestbassmagazine.com if you want them to send you your own copy or look at it when you walk in the store. Get over and give yeah. it a glance and go, hey, it that's the Terry guy I, I heard about. Uh, go ahead and give it a grab. You've uh, got three more issues planned in the next cycle in the next year? Yep, that is correct. Hey, Terry, well, good luck this weekend. Maybe uh, pop back on the show a little bit later on in the summer and let us know how the bass fishing's going. Sounds great. We appreciate it. Terry Ellis, Midwest Bass Magazine. We'll talk to you later. All right, thanks for having me You bet. Take right. care, Terry. There he goes, Terry Ellis. I you like know, it. I like, I a like little, it. Absolutely. A little bit more bass. Uh, one of the questions I guess I would have had time to ask him, we're at 815 right now, so we got to take a break. But it seems like, I know bass fishing has gotten bigger in Wisconsin. I've got a lot of friends over there. Mm-hmm. There's There was a flip about 10 years ago, and they're really starting to warm up to bass fishing. I don't think it's going to get as big in Minnesota. It's walleye country, but it's still just a fun fish to go out for. And you can go out on Minnetonka and Waconia and find some structures, especially, heck, with the big lakes out west. West, some of the small lakes right in here around the metro find a tree find those trees that are down and yeah. along the shoreline and plunk around in there and i tell you what you know you guys know i'm biased towards hooking a walleye but boy when you hook into a nice large mouth or a smallie that is a fight that you're going to remember for a couple I'll of days tell you, what, you get a you get a large mouth bass. you get a five pound anywhere from a three to a five pound large mouth bass just a good eater on there and you're just going to have a lot of fun catching them don't you have a lot of respect for men like terry ellis and all these other guys that they, they get into this thing because this is a a, a love of of the of sport a, yeah of, of the sport there's a lot of work involved. There's a lot of time involved. There's no money involved, yeah. I'm guessing. And this is, uh, he's offering, he's giving something back. And I'm telling you, if you get a chance, pick up one of those magazines, well worth it. And but I'll tell you what I, I like about that. it, Boom. I like the action of it. I mean, the crankbait, the going in with artificials, and you're constantly flipping that thing. Yes. There's always action. You're always yep. moving. It's not slow. You're not slow trolling. You're not dragging the bottom. You know, you'll drop a worm on the bottom if you Texas hook it and kind of drag it through some structure, stuff like that. But you're, it's, it, you know, it's kind of a movement action. Yeah. Well, when we come fishing. back, I want to tell you one bass yeah. fishing story from many many, many years ago that always sticks in my mind. All right. Let's take a break. Hey, well, we've talked about uh, sharks. We've talked about Goliath. uh, What were we talking about? Groupers. Goliath group, 600-pound Goliath groupers. We've talked about bass. We haven't talked about Flathead yet. Our old buddy. It's been a while since we've had him on. Brian Clawwitter, BrianK'sWorld.com. He's coming up on Ticket Outdoors. Ticket Outdoors on 105 The Ticket. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, only on 105 The Ticket. Joey Logano just screams out into the lead. The car is locked in the second. Matt Kenseth and Kevin Harvick side by side for third. Saturday, we have night racing with the Quaker State 400, live from Kentucky Speedway. Tune in the Sprint Cup Series starting Saturday at 6 o'clock. That's the battle for the lead in turn one. This is Brad Keselowski. This is Dylan Hart Jr. This is Jeff Gordon. This is Jimmy Johnson. This is Kevin Harvick. Your home for NASCAR in the Twin Cities is Sports Radio 105 The Ticket.
If you love the outdoors, then you probably have a truck that you love, too. Custom truck accessories can help protect your truck from the rigors of outdoor activities. They have custom seat covers and floor mats to protect against the mud and dirt from the field. Toppers and tonneau covers to protect your gear. If you're a truck guy, you'll appreciate the knowledge and experience of the Custom Truck Accessories crew. Visit CustomTruckAccess.com or stop by their store to see what a difference being family-owned can make for you. Better bring a truck. Mills Fleet Farm's stock-up sale is now. Extra laundry detergent and nice and fluffy fabric softener are on sale. So are men's Wrangler 20X jeans. Stock up on Tidy Cat's Glade cat litter that has a clean spring scent. Save on five-quart jugs of Mobile Super 5000 motor oil. Keep pool water clean with long-lasting Clorox Pool & Spa Extra Blue Chlorinating Tablets. And everyone loves almonds. They're on sale, too, during the stock-up sale at Mills Fleet Farm. The Ticket Outdoors is proud to be a partner with Lakes Trading Company. Why? Because they kick That's why. Guns to buy, guns to shoot, guns to rent, and the best prices on ammo around. We love Lakes Trading Company because they eat, sleep, and breathe guns just like us. Looking to get a permit to carry class or renew your old permit? Don't be disappointed by a cut rate instructor. Lakes Trading Company has top-notch instructors and on-site range and meals provided. Lakes Trading Company, off 8th Street in Forest Lake or online at lakestradingco.com. Well... Minnesota fishing season is officially here, and it's time to hit your favorite lakes and fishing spots. Boomer here with the Ticket Outdoors, and I want to thank Alumacraft for being our official boat sponsor. I just got off the water with my Alumacraft T-Pro, and boy, do I love the space, storage, and sweet ride on the water. I love Alumacraft because they're made right here in Minnesota, and they're simply the best aluminum boat on the market. For more about Alumacraft, visit your local dealer or go to alumacraft.com. This is your 105 The Ticket Weather from Nature's Fury. Not much rain the next couple days. Tonight, low of 59. Tomorrow, warming up. Mostly sunny, high of 83. Friday, a great start to your weekend as well. High of 85 and mostly sunny. The rain may come on Saturday. Hanging around 83 for a high, about a 50-50 chance of rain. Same chance on Sunday, but warmer. High of 89 for your weekend. This weather update brought to you by Nature's Fury. You can find Nature's Fury at your local Cub Foods and select holiday stores. Now back to Ticket Outdoors, only on Sports Radio 105, The Ticket. Well, it's getting to that magical time of the night where we're just talking to each other off the air. As the stories as never on. stop on they the Ticket Outdoors, do the they, boys? Am I on? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. No, nope. okay. sure you're not on. Usually this is about the time of the night. We've been turning you down at 8.15 for about a year now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're smart. You got a good I've story been, for us, Drew? I've been talking. No, I'll tell you, we're talking about bass fishing. My buddy Joe Bessler, who now lives in, uh, in uh, Alaska, he was back in town here a couple of weeks ago. We went to a Twins game. I fished a lot when I was a kid. We we talked about this a number of times in the show when your dad took you out all the time and fish and yeah. fish and fish and fish and fish to the point where you say, I don't want to do it anymore. No, I, it, it, I, yeah. I did that a lot until I was about 13, right. 14. So I don't want to do it anymore. When I was in college, I met my buddy Joe Bessler, a great guy. And his friend's family owned a uh, Kohler ice cream place, milk place in White Bear Lake, and they made eggnog. And we would go ice fishing. And Joe said, let's go ice fishing. I never ice fished in my life, really. So we went fresh eggnog, go ice fishing. <laughs> and, and this was when I was a kid. And all of a sudden, so Joe and I became good friends. When he went to uh, University of Minnesota Morris, he and I went fishing on Red Rock Lake, camped out, and... Um, I had, uh, I don't know what kind of rod it was, had a, a pistol grip on it, it was a cool rod, and Joe was fishing with hula poppers, and Ooh. all of a sudden, he sees a bass, try to get this hula popper, and it missed it. Now, we're fishing out of a canoe, and picture, and it had rained for so much that the farmlands had overflown, overgrown, overflowed, and we're fishing over barbed wire fences, actually, yeah. and we're watching Joe uh, throw this hula popper. And the fish missed once, fish it missed twice. All of a sudden, this largemouth bass hits this hula popper, and it comes out of the water, probably two and a half feet. I still picture this thing come yeah. out of the water, and it snapped Joe's line. And all of a sudden, Joe said, stay still, stay still. It's going to come up shaking it. And we stayed still for about six seconds. All of a sudden, about four feet away from the boat, this fish came out of the water, shaking this hula popper, trying to get it out of its mouth. 
Joe tried to grab the line and missed it. But I'll never forget the vision, the scene, the picture of that bass coming out of the water, shaking that hula popper, trying to get it loose. And I never forget that. It was a great, great image. I'll never forget. It was a cool yeah, story. Getting yeah. the bass out of the water, that is a pretty oh, cool Oh, that thing. was cool. That's Especially top, a top water lure like that. That was a lot of fun. I tell you what, top water fishing is a lot of fun because, you know, you don't know what's going on. You get kind of bored. And actually, I remember a year ago, I was with the folks at the National <laughs> Sports Center, which I think will do another broadcast there for the Hard Water Expo. Mm-hmm. And uh, the first one that hit my top water, I kind of freaked out for a second, you know, because you just see this explosion and this monster come out like Godzilla. And it's... Uh, uh, it's something about topwater fishing that can be cool. a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. Kind of cool. Uh, the opposite of topwater fishing is going all the way down to the bottom in that mucky mud, and that's where our next guest. We Dirt haven't had him fish. on in a while. Brian Clawwetter, uh, meet your good buddy Boomer here. That's where I met Boomer, was down in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, BK, I love you, brother. I heard you got a big announcement, right? The state of Wisconsin smartened up and made uh, Flathead a rough fish. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, hey, I got to uh, revert back to your uh, topwater bass story. Uh, about a month ago, I was out uh, checking out some places down on the Mississippi River, and we were channel cat fishing for about an hour, and then I had to leave. So I had to ask this friend of mine, uh, Mary Trumar, to come along, and uh, we just she liked to catfish, so I thought I'd take her along for an hour and take her back to her to the uh, cabin. And uh, well, that old out, line. <laughs> and she, uh, well, maybe I said that wrong. But anyway, <laughs> you make anyway, her a uh, while we're out there, she hooked into a, a you know, it was just a 48 inch sturgeon, but it, she had a little tussle bringing it in. And while she was releasing that one, the second sturgeon bit the other rod on the other side. Oh, and wow. she grabbed that, and that that fish came out of the, the air or out of the water four times. The last time it came out, it was right below the boat, and I, have, I was standing on the edge of the boat with my net, and this thing was. It, and I'm not exaggerating, it was two feet from my face, and all I can see is this nose with all its little pimples on it and these five whiskers looking at me right in the face. And that's the closest I've been to a, a, a really a wild sturgeon uh, in a very long time as wow. far as coming out of the water. Did you get a chance to net that one? Oh, we got it. Yeah, it was 52 or 54 inches. I can't recall exactly what it was. That's I've, real, huh? I've not been sturgeon fishing. Do they generally come out of the water like that? Sometimes. Okay. Not always. Um, Be- Brian K. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Brian K's World dot com trophy catfishing and sturgeon adventures. Uh, their number one goal to give you a safe, fun evening on the river that you'll never forget. I'm reading right from your website, Brian B K is what we call you. Uh, it's hard to believe, but it's been at least or over a year since the last time we talked to you. Yeah, it's been a long time. When the river was almost unfishable last year, unboatable. Uh, a little bit of a different story this year. How's 2015? It's been uh, very good. A lot of uh, small flatheads been coming out at first part of the year, and uh, they've been picking up uh, the last uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, I took a young lady out and her dad, and uh, she her first uh, flathead she caught in her life uh, was 47. Well, I call it 47 pounds because the scale was bouncing between 47 and 50 pounds. Jeez. I could just couldn't hold it steady enough. And all I time. caught was a 21 pounder with you, my friend. But yeah, I well, still, I I'll tell you what. Next time. Well, it was one of the <laughs> nicest experiences I've ever had on a beautiful evening on the Mississippi River, full moon, and uh, catching a couple of catfish. It was a, really a cool, cool experience. So thanks for taking me out there. Pretty romantic, wasn't it? Well, you know, I no hickeys, but it worked out real well. <laughs> BK, you should see him with his hair cut now. He looks really good. Hey, BK, I watched the video. <laughs> <laughs> BK, you talked about this uh, young lady catching a 47-pound flathead, and I remember the story was true that we had you on a year ago where it was more of a night fish. Is that the same approach you're doing right now? now for these big catfish this time of year? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a percentage fisherman. I like to fish when I have the best chance to get my customers on a fish, and uh, nighttime is the best time uh, in the evening, and then I don't like staying out until 5 o'clock in the morning, which would be the next best time. So um, yeah, the the uh, early evening, and, uh, well, we fish until about 1, 2 o'clock every night. So, so, BK, you talk about wanting to fish the percentages, and it's been a while since we had you on the show. Um, it, it really is interesting, the the approach you take and, and the, the science behind it. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about why night fishing is the best for catfish and what type of uh, process you do to get those big honkers? That's a good question. Sure. Well, first of all, we have to break away. Uh, everybody says... When they say catfish, I go to the gas station, they, they say, where are you going? How was fishing today? And I said, well, I haven't gone out yet. Oh, what are you going out for at night? And I go, catfish. And they go, oh. 
I'd like to have a picture of a, a 47 pound flathead to show them what we're we're fishing for. These aren't uh, the the three pound or the two pound channel cats that you catch in the uh, or that you get in the grocery store. Uh, these are uh, well, what I figure a trophy fish is is 20 pounds and above. So they're not a small fish at all, and they put a, a, a pretty good fight. It's called the flathead catfish. And uh, Minnesota has two catfish, the, the flathead and the channel cat. And the channel cat's smaller than the uh, than the flathead. Channel cats, you can pretty much catch them all day long. Um, they typically bite on stink bait and just about anything, actually. Uh, flatheads prefer uh, live bait, although they will uh, uh, take a live a, a cut bait or a dead bait at, at times. What do you use uh, them for live bait for flathead? So, well, we're using uh, uh, six to eight inch uh, bullheads. There's... Yeah. That's my preference. And then uh, I also use 12-inch uh, uh, suckers, and uh, they yeah. work real well, too. And they're they're live on the hook, so they're wiggling around. And mm-hmm. most people would uh, take those suckers home and pickle them, uh, but uh, I use them for bait. <laughs> and then it, and now on the Wisconsin side of the Mississippi River, I can use walleyes. And there's nothing like a <laughs> seven-pound walleye. Ah, there <laughs> you go. I'm kidding, but uh, <laughs> they actually die too quick. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now, BK, what did I hear about uh, the Wisconsin? You know, where you're on the river, it's always cut in half. There's two sides of it. On the Wisconsin side, I just read something about the daily limit on flathead, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, Minnesota uh, updated their laws here uh, a year ago or so, and uh, which is, is good. They've actually been very ag- aggressive on uh, changing their catfish laws. Wisconsin seems to be a little slower, um, and I'm not sure. I've been working with them, trying to uh, uh, ask them why, but I haven't really. Uh, well, they're just a little answer. slower. I think you yeah. said it yourself. They're well, just a little slower. <laughs> well, you know, it's the cheese, I guess. But <laughs> the. Uh, uh, they have a Congress over there, and it takes a little while to go through their whole process uh, compared to uh, Minnesota as well. Right. But the the bottom line is is that uh, the uh, flathead catfish uh, mixed with the channel catfish is uh, a limit of 25 uh, per licensed angler per day uh, in Wisconsin on the Mississippi River, which is really funny is because if you go to the inland waters, uh, the uh, limit is 10 per day uh, per licensed angler, unless you go to... Uh, uh, Winnebagosh or Winnebago, I'm sorry. Then you can only have one catfish or one flathead catfish out of the uh, the ten. So they have some specific laws throughout the state, but when you get to the Mississippi River, it goes to 25 fish, which well. That seems like a lot, fish. doesn't it? Yeah, it, well, that is a lot. that's kind of my point. Is 25. It, it really doesn't matter uh, if the fishery can support it. Uh, it doesn't matter if people are catching that many fish or not. What it really matters is is that it's excessive and it's wasteful. Absolutely, uh, it is. Well, nobody's going to keep that many fish. and You're not going to keep 25 flathead. Well, uh, you know, not a lot of people do, but I uh, spend a lot of time at a resort down there, and I've seen cars drive out oh, with yeah. their bumpers dragging on the ground with coolers full of fish, especially when it comes to uh, the wintertime when the the flatheads, which are unlike uh, most other fish, they go dormant in the winter time, and they'll stack up like cordwood. Uh, uh, that's a cliche, but that's what they do uh, when the water temperature gets uh, below 40 degrees. They don't bite. The only way you can you catch them is by snagging them. And once a snag fish uh, ends up in your boat, it's really hard for a, a DNR CO to prove that it's been snagged, unless it's got a big rip on side. I suppose they could try and do it that way, but. So, in other words, any time a fish is snagged in the wintertime, it, it becomes a legally caught fish once it's in the boat. So what Minnesota did uh, to eliminate that issue is that uh, they closed the season for flathead catfish from December 1st to May 30th in their wintering months. So the only way you can catch them is by snagging them, which is illegal anyway. So yeah. it really didn't make any difference if they closed the season, uh, you know, because nobody could legally fish for them. Uh, Wisconsin hasn't done that. So... Uh, if you're on the Minnesota side of the river, you can't fish for flathead catfish in the, those months. If you're on the Wisconsin side, it's uh, game on. And uh, and a lot of people, they don't know the difference between uh, snagging a fish and, and uh, not when other people are snagging a fish. If you see a boat out there and they're casting rapalas, uh, I'm sorry, not rapalas, but uh, daredevils or any other type of treble hook, and they're pulling in these big fish, Unless it's hooked on the tail, of course, uh, they really can't tell the difference, and they don't know uh, what they're doing. 
they don't know that they're sleeping. There's you know 250 fish below them, and they're just hooking onto them and, and bring them in. So they don't call the the tip lines. Uh, and then to be honest with you, there's there's some people out there that are <clears throat> walleye fishermen that just don't care. <laughs> so well, they don't. <laughs> I don't know who that would be in yeah. present <laughs> company. But so um, so anyway, uh, you can go to the Wisconsin side. You can take 25 fish home. And uh, if you look at the uh, fish consumption advisories for both Minnesota and Wisconsin, that's uh, one uh, meal of fish per month uh, for a uh, person that's over childbearing uh, years. Uh, you're, and, you're, you sound like a lawyer, I know, BK. It's, it, that's why you <laughs> hire BrianK'sWorld.com when you want to go uh, channel catfishing or flathead catfishing or sturgeon out on the river. I don't know. And then there's two states involved. Uh, BK, stick around for another segment, would you, buddy? Sure. Uh, we'll come back with uh, BK, Brian Clawwitter. We're talking channel catfishing, flathead catfishing, big sturgeon, sturgeon adventures out on the river on Ticket Outdoors. Gio and Jones getting you to work every weekday morning until 8. This is Greg Giannotti. You're listening to Sports Radio 105, The Ticket. Well, Minnesota fishing season is officially here, and it's time to hit your favorite lakes and fishing spots. Boomer here with the Ticket Outdoors, and I want to thank Alumacraft for being our official boat sponsor. I just got off the water with my Alumacraft T-Pro, and boy, do I love the space, storage, and sweet ride on the water. I love Alumacraft because they're made right here in Minnesota, and they're simply the best aluminum boat on the market. For more about Alumacraft, visit your local dealer or go to alumacraft.com. John Thielen here, host of Fish Ed TV. When I'm looking for that go-to bait for walleye fishing throughout the summer months, I look no further than the Lindy Lil Guy. The Lil Guy offers a cross between a Lindy rig, a crawler harness, and a crankbait. Its hard floating body runs like a crankbait in front of a tandem hook crawler harness. The Lil Guy is equally deadly at Lindy rig and spinner speeds or pulled aggressively at crankbait speed. The Lindy Lil Guy is available in 11 distinct color patterns and can be found at your favorite retailer or at lindyfishingtackle.com. Better bring a truck. Mills Fleet Farm's stock up sale is now. Extra laundry detergent and nice and fluffy fabric softener are on sale. So are men's Wrangler 20X jeans. Stock up on Tidy Cat's Glade cat litter that has a clean spring scent. Save on five quart jugs of Mobile Super 5000 motor oil. Keep pool water clean with long lasting Clorox Pool and Spa Extra Blue Chlorinating Tablets. And everyone loves almonds. They're on sale too during the stock up sale at Mills Fleet Farm. Love it. Now back to Ticket Outdoors, only on Sports Radio 105 to Ticket. I think maybe uh, the Minnesota DNR and the Wisconsin DNR each stand on their own banks of the river and just piss and see who can get out furthest into the river. Is that who wins the pissing match? That's the I'm magical sure. line. I'm sorry, are we back on the air? Yeah, we're talking to Brian Clawwitter. And I'll tell you what, Brian fishes the Mississippi River all the time. We're talking about Minnesota and Wisconsin. And, I, I, you know, if there, there's different laws in Wisconsin. There are in Minnesota for catfish and all kinds of fish. I, that would drive me crazy. BK, you know I sell real estate. I've got a Wisconsin license as well. And the difference between the two states is astronomical, and it's hard to keep up. Yes, yes. The one thing I like to tell people when they ask about uh, do I need a Minnesota or Wisconsin license when fishing the uh, Mississippi or St. Croix River, as far as that goes, is it works just like your driver's license. Well, let's back up for just a minute. If you're a resident of Minnesota, you have to have a Minnesota fishing license. If you're a resident of Wisconsin, you have to have a Wisconsin fishing license. If you're from any place else, it doesn't matter what you're going to get because it's going to be a non-resident, whatever state uh, uh, you, you choose. Now, it works just like a driver's license. So your Minnesota driver's license works in Wisconsin just as well as it does in Minnesota. However, you have to follow the laws that your state you're in. So if you're doing 70 miles an hour, because that's the law in Minnesota, and you cross the, the bridge into Wisconsin and it says 65, you can't drive 70 miles an hour when the speed limit's 65. Yeah. And that's the same way it is on uh, the Mississippi and St. Croix River. So I can use three lines when I'm fishing in Wisconsin territorial waters. However, if I go to the Minnesota side, I can only use two lines per person. It, it is interesting. And now Scani, by the way, it just went 70 on their interstate over there. It's yeah. always a pissing match between these two. Yeah. And that's BrianK'sWorld.com, by the way. If you want to get out on the river and go for the flatheads and go for the sturgeon, this is one reason why. Uh, now, how do you guys handle that when somebody wants to charter or get out to one of your, uh, uh, you know, go out with you guys and do some night flathead and sturgeon fishing how do you guys handle that with people with the licenses and everything 
Well, with the licenses, first I ask what state are they from, and if they're from Minnesota, then they have to have a Minnesota license, and if yeah. they're from Wisconsin, they get their Wisconsin license. Uh, if they're from any other state, they can buy either one. And uh, I, I have my launch out of Everett's Resort, so uh, they sell Wisconsin licenses Hager City. there. Yep, Hager City. Yeah. And uh, they also have a, a computer where you can buy, well, you can buy a license on your cell phone nowadays, so it, it's it, you can buy it on the water if you want it's to. Not, so you yeah. can really just, I mean, n- not even have a fishing line, not know what you're doing and go, be listening to this and go, you know, I just want to get out in the river and do that. I don't want to go walleye fishing. I don't want to go bass fishing. Right. I just want to get out in the river in the middle of the night and see if I can get a big flathead or a sturgeon and get a hold of BrianK'sWorld.com and you'll set them up with the licenses. You drive down to Hager City. It's a hop and a skip and you're out on the river. You bring along whatever uh, non-alcoholic beverages you like. Yeah. And if you want any snacks, bring that along. I have a cooler in the boat. And that's all you need besides warm clothes. Warm clothes. Like so you guys have everything else. You've got all the rods, the reels, obviously the bait. Yep, everything. You know, BK, speaking of bait, you talked a little earlier in the show about using uh, flatheads and big suckers and, 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 and how you hook them. I guess, how do you hook that? You know, I'm thinking of the traditional hooking a shiner, you know, through the mouth for walleyes or whatnot in all seriousness. How do you hook a bullhead for a catfish? Well, uh, between the uh, the uh, top fin and the tail, uh, there's a nice section on a bullhead or a sucker, and uh, you just hook it diagonally through uh, that section, and uh, that way it, it kicks a little better. There are some people that hook hook uh, uh, their bait through their mouth, too. Uh, I've never preferred that way because if there's any current, they seem to, the current kind of keeps them straight. So when I hook them on the, on the back end like that, they kick a little bit more. And that's what flatheads like is the vibration. Uh, they you do use smell, very little sight because obviously they can only see six inches if it's uh, very good water clarity, and uh, they focus in on that struggling um, movement uh, underwater, and uh, just light up on the bait and open up their mouth, suck it in whole. They don't have any teeth. Uh, well, to speak of, they got some sandpaper on the front of their lips, yeah. and uh, uh, they suck it in, and uh, that's when your rod goes thump and you. Give them about three seconds, and you set the hook. And uh, I use WOA rods. They're actually called Team Catfish iCat rods, but I call them WOA rods because when you set the hook, you go WOA. <laughs> <laughs> and they fight like a son of a bucket. I tell you what, the 21-pounder that I caught was you know, no massive fish uh, compared to some of the stuff that BK brings in. But I tell you, it, it's, your arms get sore. It's a lot of fun, boy. You know, There's a lot of fight in the world of Yeah, boat, yeah sure. there is. Now, Look at that. Yeah. BK, this might be a, a, a stupid question, but you talk about hooking that flathead, I guess, near the you know the top of, of the fish or the dorsal. There's a nice area there, so it's alive and kicking, and the catfish loves the vibration. Catfish are a bottom-feeding fish. Now, so are, I guess, bullheads and suckers, so you don't have any weight to keep that bait fish down, do you? They just naturally, when they're hooked, they're going to go right back down to the bottom? Yeah, I need to correct you. You keep uh, mentioning flatheads as bait, but it's uh, bullheads or suckers that we use for bait for the flatheads. And I think you just had a... Yeah, uh, but so that bullhead will naturally just go right back to the bottom after you hook it. Yeah, we use uh, uh, about an 8-inch liter of uh, 80-pound test uh, uh, line, braided line, and then that is, goes to a, a 80 pound test swivel. And then we I use a 4-ounce sinker. There's sometimes it's a slip sinker. And uh, you can get by with a little less than that, but it's just easier for me to keep about four ounces. And because it's a slip sinker, the fish never feels the sinker most of the time anyway. So um, the the line slides through the sinker, and uh, I use a 80-pound line all the way up to the, the reel. I use Garcia 7000s for uh, winches to pull them in with. And then, as I mentioned, we use those uh, ICAT uh, carbon fiber rods uh, to bring them in. And they've got a, enough backbone that uh, you can bring in a 50-pound fish. And, uh, well, it's a struggle. I mean, there's not – it's not a, no a giant grouper, a glass grouper. <laughs> yeah, a well, 600-pound grouper. But I tell you what, BK, for our listeners out there, they need to go to BrianK'sWorld.com. Yeah. And Zep just turned over the screen here. These are some massive catfish right, we're there's talking a, about. There's a, this is the 2015 pictures. I just kind of wanted to get a sense of what was happening here in this yeah, what season. What a coincidence. They're all good-looking women on yeah, this picture. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell that redhead that's yeah. sitting there with the big flat head looks about a 40 40- Pounder plus. Uh, that was she's, Mary, I think. Yeah, <laughs> she's got her hand in there. I can't see. Is there a wedding ring on that finger? <laughs> I, you know, I have to well, warn you well, guys, if you go fishing with BK, yeah. which I did last year, if you're a rookie like I was, and you catch one of these big babies, 
you got to kiss it. No. So, yeah. Well, I've, you I've kiss kissed worse. Oh. I'm from South Dakota, and I was in the Army. Hey, BK. <laughs> <laughs> now, BK, you talked about when you get one of these 40-pounders on, you've got the right equipment, of course. What's your percentage of, of getting them up and out of the water? I mean, do you lose some? Well, you know, it, that changes every night. Uh, you know, I, a couple Fridays ago, uh, we caught nine fish and uh, lost four. Okay. Uh, then the following day, uh, we, we caught two fish. And lost six. What, uh, what, how do you lose them? Wow! Yeah. It, well, you know, it's uh, you set the hook and it just doesn't quite catch, or so you're not it's on for it. a second or two, and then it's gone. Okay. Uh, you know, the, these fish have huge. I mean, if you can imagine, like, a, well, not quite a five-gallon pail, the opening that's a large fish has that. Yeah. And when you set that hook, if that hook doesn't catch in the right spot, or sometimes it just misses the whole mouth completely. Uh, it's gone. You and talk about you talk about using bullheads as bait. I mean, uh, the difference between a channel and a flathead, and I've never caught a flathead, but I've caught plenty of channels. Is you could almost use a smaller channel catfish as bait for a flathead. That's how the difference in the size of their mouths. Definitely, and yeah. they, there's people down south that do use channel catfish. I, I believe it. I mean, a flathead. It's. I mean, it's just an entirely different. You know, it's a fish. completely different fish. Yeah, uh, they don't. Uh, they don't have the same habits. They don't have the, sp- the same spawning habits. They're, I don't. They just have whiskers. Like how do they eat? I know we've asked you that before, but they don't look like a fish you want to eat. Although a channel, I love yeah. eating channel cats. How are flatheads? Well, uh, I've only had one flathead. Well, in that answers life. that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I tasted it, and, and to be honest with you, uh, it tasted. Everybody says they're so good, but I tasted it, and to be honest with you, it tasted like a walleye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him a slow pitch on that. There you go. Yeah. He he took the bait, Zep. BK, what what kind of hook are you using there? You know, when I was chasing sturgeon on the Rainy River, we were using circle hooks, and, you know, you really don't have to set the hook on that. What kind of hook are you using for these flatheads? Because you talked about setting the hook on the war rod. With uh, with sturgeon and channel cats, I love circle hooks because they're just made for that those types of lips. Mm -hmm. When you get to a flathead, the bait is going to impede the the usefulness of that circle hook because it's taking up space on the bottom of the hook, and that hook has to catch the corner of its mouth when it comes out. So what we use for uh, flatheads is a, a, either an 8-odd or a 10-odd uh, Super J uh, hook, or um, though Team Catfish has them, and there's other brands too, Gamagatsu and so on. And uh, they're a, a large hook. They're probably about the size of a, a half dollar on the bottom uh, by the J portion and uh, they're heavy wire and uh, they sell them uh, bend when you hit a uh, get stuck on a rock or wood because they're just uh, it's a strong hook and uh, when you set that hook you have to pull the hook out of the bait because you got it in the back of the the large sucker or the large bullhead and once it's pulled out of that then it has to go into the flathead so we also have a rule that I I don't remember if I told uh, uh uh, strew about or not, but when you set the hook, if you miss the fish and the bullhead comes back to the boat, you have to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I, made, I made sure I caught that fish. Speaking of that, yeah, pal, yeah. <laughs> uh, how busy have you been this summer? How many nights a week are you fishing? It's been crazy. I, I've actually tried to, uh, in the past, try to have Sundays off and uh, so that I could do other things with the family and so on. And uh, this year I've used up all my uh, Sundays, and uh, I'm booked for July. I was booked for June, and I'm trickling into August now. And Good for you. Sturgeon takes off after uh, August. And usually August is my month for house maintenance, boat maintenance, and wife maintenance. And, uh, <laughs> uh, that you know he said wife last. Yeah. <laughs> no, I said not necessarily in that order. No, right, okay. <laughs> RyanKaysWorld.com. So you still have some dates that are available, but I, you know, if you want to get out on the river and it sounds like it's a fantastic year, go look at the photos. RyanKaysWorld.com. Click on the 2015 photos. You know what year it is. Um, I would get on it. I'd jump on that bait and grab that hook right now. BK, uh, thanks for spending some time with us here tonight. Yes, sir. Thank you guys very much, and uh, hey, we'll see you soon. We'll bug, thanks, you. BK. we'll bug you here in the future. All right. Bye-bye. BK, Brian com. It's time, boys and girls, for a lake report. Back with Bravo. Boomer. Ticket Outdoors on 105 The Ticket. 
On Deck Radio with Pete Wagner and former twins Gene Larkin and Al Newman. Dan, glad. What do you see the Molly's trying to do to implement his way of doing things? Well, I think the first thing that jumps out is, you know, Molly's kind of the quiet messenger, whereas uh, Gardy, I think, wore his uh, emotions more on his sleeve. You know, I think Mahler's more the calm guy, and I think the guys kind of respond to that a little bit differently. Tune in On Deck Radio, Saturday mornings at 11. Wall-to-wall baseball talk on Sports Radio 105 The Ticket. If you love the outdoors, then you probably have a truck that you love, too. Custom truck accessories can help protect your truck from the rigors of outdoor activities. They have custom seat covers and floor mats to protect against the mud and dirt from the field. Toppers and tonneau covers to protect your gear. If you're a truck guy, you'll appreciate the knowledge and experience of the Custom Truck Accessories crew. Visit CustomTruckAccess.com or stop by their store to see what a difference being family-owned can make for you. Better bring a truck. Mills Fleet Farm's stock-up sale is now. Extra laundry detergent and nice and fluffy fabric softener are on sale. So are men's Wrangler 20X jeans. Stock up on Tidy Cat's Glade cat litter that has a clean spring scent. Save on five quart jugs of Mobile Super 5000 motor oil. Keep pool water clean with long-lasting Clorox Pool and Spa Extra Blue Chlorinating Tablets. And everyone loves almonds. They're on sale, too, during the stock-up sale at Mills Fleet Farm. Well... Minnesota fishing season is officially here, and it's time to hit your favorite lakes and fishing spots. Boomer here with the Ticket Outdoors, and I want to thank Alumacraft for being our official boat sponsor. I just got off the water with my Alumacraft T-Pro, and boy, do I love the space, storage, and sweet ride on the water. I love Alumacraft because they're made right here in Minnesota, and they're simply the best aluminum boat on the market. For more about Alumacraft, visit your local dealer or go to alumacraft.com. Now back to Ticket Outdoors, only on Sports Radio 105, The Ticket. I'm just saying goodbye there to BK Brian K's world.com. He is booking up. And it's true, you know, I was on the testimonials page, Brian K's world.com, and just about every other testimonial says, Love the stories. He's really just a cool guy to hang out with. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I, went, I might have gotten lucky last year when I was with Brian because it was a gorgeous, gorgeous night. The water was calm. The, wa- the water was really, really high going through the dams and all that. Caught a couple of nice, nice, big, big catfish. But the conversation, before you know it, the four hours is done. Midnight comes and it's time to go home, and you don't want to go home. Yeah. It's uh, and telling you what. Mom, I, don't I mean, want to I mean go I'm home. not BSing with, about. Uh, I'm not BSing by any means. If you want to do it, give it a chance. It's a great experience. Yeah. Well, good luck. It sounds like uh, a bunch of folks are going to. That's going out to the river, and that's going to the bottom. But for those of us not going out to the river and going down to the bottom, there's a lot of open water season left, and Boomer, what's the state? Things are going to get warmer. We're going to cl- start climbing into those upper 80s this weekend. And I, like everybody else, starts thinking, uh-oh, are we done? Is it the dog days of fishing already? You know, I don't think we're going to get into the dog days of fishing just yet. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about some different presentations you can get into. But we had John Thielen on the air last week. Love him. And he, you know, he's such a, a great educator of the sport of fishing. And we've had cooler temps. You know, the ice came out in a more normal type of year this year. And it just didn't get as warm in Minnesota. And when you drive by the boat ramps, like Mille Lacs, I'm going to talk about that on the Lake Report from our good buddy Tony Roach. The ramps and the landings are just full from Mille Lacs to Leech Lake to Asakis. So the bite is still really good. Now, I understand the economy is a little better. Gas is a little cheaper, and that's helping folks get on the road. But I'm going to talk about four lakes in today's lake reports that have really been producing some good fish. Um, Mille Lacs, we're going to start off with. We got some good info from our buddy Tony Roach. Then we're going to shift gears, and we're going to go to Osakis again. I've mentioned that in a couple lake reports previous, but I want to stay on Lake Osakis because I talked to my buddies at Lake Osakis Guide Service, and that lake is continuing to produce walleyes. And then we're going to shift gears, talk a little bit about Leech Lake. There's a couple points there that a lot of folks are loving up in the Walker, Minnesota area. And then we're going to end it with Rush Lake, which is where I was on Otter Tail County. But let's start with Mille Lacs, guys. 
it's important to continue to focus on Mille Lacs because I understand five to ten years ago, the targeted harvest for walleyes was about half a million pounds, and now the targeted harvest, I think, is around 40, 50, yeah, 50 yeah, 40,000 yeah. pounds. But still, it is a great fishery to go if you're looking to catch some big walleyes and just get some pitcher fish. And I was chatting with Tony Roach, and he said the mayfly hatch has hit. And when the mayfly hatch hits on Mille Lacs, guys, you're going to have a lot of hungry fish, and they're going to get their food bag on, and it's going to give you different options to chase those fish. Um, one of the things that Tony was talking about is rigging. They're still having a lot of good luck rigging on there. And what I mean by rigging is like a live bait rig, or we had John Thielen on here talking about the Lindy Little Guy. Yep. If you're running some of those flats, like 7 Mile, or you're chasing some of those ridge lines, use about a 6 to 12 foot snail, put on a leech or a night crawler, and they're having really good luck with that. Or you can still pitch bobbers. We talk about when, when you catch a trend or a pattern, when you're Lindy rigging on Mille Lacs and you get a couple, mark it on your waypoint, go back on there, throw a bobber on there with a leech or a worm, and they're having really good luck. Now, Tony did say for the folks that are chasing Mille Lacs, if it's flat calm out there, now they're starting to run lead core. And for our listeners out there, lead core is a type of line that has lead in the middle. So it's going to run your crankbait a little deeper. So, you know, your typical crankbait, you might get, you know, 10 to 15 feet, you know, deep on it. But if you're running lead core, you can get that dang crank down to about 20 to 30 feet. You talked about the mayfly hatch. Um, a couple of years ago, five or six, seven years ago, Dinah and I went to Lake Michigan and the Mayfly hatch was massive, and it was right. brutal. Things shut down. What do you do? Well, when you have a Mayfly hatch and you see them coming out of the water, you can actually sometimes see it on your graph or your GPS or your electronics on the boat. You can kind of see, like, the bottom of the water coming alive. What kind of a Mayfly hatch are they expecting this year? You know, I don't know exactly, but I know that it's happening right now. I know a couple of years ago it was just so awful they where they had to, like, clear them off the and, highway, and right? They for- was- and they forecast it like that. They'll forecast it severe to mild and everything in between. There's about five classifications, but I haven't read anything. I haven't been on the DNR website, so I don't know how they're forecasting this Mayfly hatch. We were hatch up in northern Minnesota now. when we were doing that, and... You could, walking down the sidewalk, you'd actually slip because of the mayflies. I remember going right. up to Walker on my motorcycle with a buddy. Oh, and scary. We, we pulled over probably about, and I'm not even kidding, a couple of miles, which is you know oh. about every minute or two to clean off your goggles oh, and your boy. face mask yeah. so that you could continue to see. But that and then you'd watch fishing. your vision just... Well, of course, it affects, that's a lot of bait on the water. Yeah. Right, and that's going to activate it. That's going to trigger a bite. And Does that pull them to the surface? Are we not going to, you talk about lead-centered baits uh, yep. going deeper? Yep. Are well, we gonna, it, it kind of depends. Yeah, yeah, it's going to depend on the structure where you're at, right? Because the mayfly hatch, if it's happening on the mud flats, yeah. it's going to be a little different story. You might be going a little higher in the water column, right? But if you're more on a rocky point in a deeper part of the lake where there's not as much may, mayfly hatch running, okay. that's where you're going to get into running that lead core, which is that line that is a little heavier. And then Tony talked about running a number five or a number seven shad wrap, and they're having some good lucks with walleyes out there. The other thing that's been exciting about Mille Lacs is they're catching a lot of 14 to 15 inch walleyes that are healthy okay mm-hmm. now i know you can't keep that with the slot on mille Lacs. it's one fish sounds like or, fun though right but it is fun and that tells you that the fishery maybe is starting to make a little bit of a comeback and there are plenty of folks still getting those 24 to 25 inch walleyes out there which are great pitcher fish and you know what it's going to be a great memory that you can ride home with yeah now you talked about walker bay okay or walker minnesota and that oh, yeah. naturally leech lake has made a really good comeback the corn Morants, you know, we started shooting them a few years back because they were eating <laughs> yes. all the walleye fingerling. Yes. It was a real big political subject. But there's a couple spots that I've been hearing about. Walker Bay, if you're looking for fish, go to about 20 to 23 feet of water. Try to find some structure. You're going to find some nice eaters in there. If you're looking for some bigger walleyes, go a little deeper in Walker Bay. I'd say, you know, 30-ish feet of water. 30-ish feet or water or deeper, they're going to find some bigger fish. And then sand and cedar point are popular parts of Le- uh, Leech Lake. Look to go to the shorelines there, about 8 to 10 feet off of the weed lines. Use a jig and a bobber with a leech or a worm, and you're going to have some nice luck there. Now, Osakis, which is in Alexandria, Minnesota, I've talked about this a couple times. This has kind of been your fun. Each year, there seems to be a lake, whether it's red, that just sort of gets hot, and it's sort of in Boomer's uh, scope. 
Yep. And this is a lake you've been talking about a lot, and it's an easy drive from the cities because it's all interstate, and you just hammer down, and you're up there. Yeah, you know, I, you're absolutely right. You know, all these fisheries go through cycles, right? Just like the grouse hunting population here in sure. the state of Minnesota. They get pounded with pressure, the forage base, or it floods out, or the water gets low, and they have a tough time. And we've seen that with Red Lake. We've seen that with Mille Lacs. You know, leeches, I'd still say, on the upswing. But Osakis continues to get brought up to me, and I chop chat with my buddy Scott at Lake Osakis Guide Service, and they are just pounding the walleyes, and that's why I want to send folks out there towards his way, because it is producing good eating fish. You know, we talked about the Lindy Little guy that yep. Phelan had, and I talked about using that double snow where you, you know, you blow up the worm, where you stretch out the worm, and you put the needle into it, and you blow it into what the, the band around it. He's going over our head. <laughs> okay, no, well, I know what he's talking well, about. No, I, I do, too, but that's, I mean, that's a sophisticated rig. You're blowing up a worm, like and you're double hooking. A lot of work to me but well, it is going. a lot of work but i tell you what if you can find the sweet spots of the weed lines and troll at about one mile an hour and look for those weed lines in about 16 to 23 feet of water you're going to have some really good luck on osakis right now and then don't forget when you start to get into the day and you want to move around run those crankbaits at about two miles an hour in about eight to 12 feet of water put your line out about 100 feet and you should have some luck and then when you get later into the day and you're finding that structure i would say between 19 to 20 three feet of water, put on a bobber with a leech, keep that leech about a foot off the bottom, and you're going to have some good luck on Osakis. And then I want to round it out with the adventure that I had on Rush Lake, guys. Yeah. You know, those bridges, don't forget about bridge fishing. We used to do it as a kid, and I, I, I learned my lesson from someone, yeah. and we caught a lot of fish going near the bridge, but if you go out towards the middle of Rush Lake, you're going to find some sandbars that come up to about five to eight feet of water we were catching some bass on the top of those weed lines and if you can find some consecutive sandbars or sunken islands you know three or four the walleyes are deeper in about 20 to 23 feet of water run a lindy little guy and you're going to have some good luck on rush as well again you don't have to drop a boat in the water you can get out on a bridge get out to a sandbar and catch yourself some walleye. I, this man excites me. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> you excite me. You excite me, too. You wow. had me at hello, oh. Strew. Jeez, I hate to end on that. <laughs> but we're going to. Hey, gang, we rerun it Sunday mornings from 6 to 8. You can catch the podcast on 105theticket.com. We'll try and have it up in the next day or two. And we're here every Wednesday night, whether you like fun. it or it's not. Been fun. It's been fun, hasn't it? It's, it's been fun, o'clock. boys. It's been great. Thanks, guys. Summer fun begins at Mills Fleet Farm. For thrills on the water, jump on a full throttle Enforcer towable on sale $99.99. Save on Michelin tires. Buy four, get a $70 MasterCard reward card. Bring home the good stuff for your pets. Get a $10 gift card when you buy select sizes of science diet dog or cat food. And stock up on Pine Tree Farms sewage cakes. They're just 69 cents each at Mills Fleet Farm. Love it.